can see and hear you. The stream is live. The stream is live. <laughs> With any luck, it should pop up on Harry's page. Are we live on that? On Harry's page. Okay. Hello, hello, hello. Um, I might wait a few minutes and see make sure a few people are on and then um, I do want to do have a quick disclaimer before we go any further just because of the nature of the conversation um hello everyone who is arriving hello well this is an interesting place to be <laughs> coming to you from <laughs> coming to you live from Harry's page um Thank you, everyone who is joining. I just saw my mum. Excellent, wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Right. I'm going to start with um, a disclaimer, which is a bit out of character for the usual way that we do things, but I think it's important given the the situation. Um, so there really is no way of telling who will be triggered by what. And with this in mind, if at any point the content of this is difficult, we suggest you taking yourself away for regulation purposes before returning, just as we would in in-person interactions. We ask that everyone avoids naming names. We're not here to have a slanging match or to armchair diagnose anyone, just to focus on Harry and his side of the story. We do have admins who are being supported by a legal representative overseeing the comment section and any comments that are that are unnecessarily harmful or cruel will be removed this is to protect everyone harry is more than happy to answer questions however there may be questions he is unable to answer for various reasons and he is well within his rights to do so ultimately i'm sure we'd all like this live to remain accessible afterwards but for this to be possible we all need to be mindful of how we are engaging and do our best to respect the boundaries here. I'm still here. I'm just. Okay, so with that in mind, and with a few people here, um, hopefully everybody receives that loud and clear and everyone can hear me okay. Um, Rachel and Harry's cameras are off. I I suspect that Harry will um, turn his camera up on in due course. And there we go. One oh. Sorry, Paula. Um. Um, wow. Hello. Hi, Paula. This is um, not something I had planned a year ago would be happening, but here we are. Um, You're telling me. I, yeah, well, exactly. There may be some people here who know what is going on or why we're here. There will be some people that know some information. There will be some people that have no idea where you have been. Um, so I guess we can start with what has this year been like for you? Hmm. Well, it's been quite the year, hasn't it? It certainly has. Sometimes it feels as though, as well as being the most, the most difficult year of my life, it could also be the most important as well. And I understand the contradiction there, but yeah, it was a very happening year, which I'm happy to go into detail if I need to. Um, so this is the first time I've been in this room and on this chair in a year, let alone streamed alive to my Facebook page, which I haven't used in a year as well. The last time I went live, it didn't end too well. Um, it yeah. I, I promptly disappeared and no one has heard from me since really, apart from the Zooms I eventually ended up doing with you, Paula. So 
yeah, this is quite a surreal experience to say the least. And what have you been doing to look after your mental health during this time? I've been doing everything, everything that I can really. Um, when it all happened, I was situated in a state of shock, paranoia, fear, confusion. Um, I didn't really have uh, the uh, energy to think, let alone look after myself. Um, there was a steady build up to what happened. It didn't exactly just come out of the blue. There was a rumbling. There was um, a steady incline taking place for a number of months before it culminated in quite the public furore. And I felt as though I had no choice but to eradicate myself from existence. Um, so when it all happened, it felt as though I regressed and lost a lot of skills and abilities. Basic functions were seemingly unavailable to me and I had to regain those skills step by step. To reiterate, the first few weeks were spent in a very confused, paranoid and fearful state. Uh, derealization is a word that springs to mind. It was difficult to know what was happening. But in time, I moved away from that state. And as reality hit, so did the anger, so did the need for justice, and so did the curiosity. What happened? I didn't even really know what I was being accused of. I didn't find that out until many months down the line. I had to become my own private investigator. Before, just before everything kicked off, I watched as people, friends, associates, colleagues started stepping away from me or breaking away from me one by one, some of whom departed with messages, making it clear they could no longer speak to me. Uh, organizations, one by one, uh, severed ties with me, canceled events. Um, and I honestly had no idea why. And my brain was scrambling for answers. I delved deeply into my past, um, pulling my hair out, racking my brain, trying to work out what the hell this could be. And the close friends who stayed assured me, Harry, you would know if you did something wrong, perhaps criminally so, to which I'd respond, but would I? Maybe I did something by accident. Maybe I am some kind of problematic sleepwalker. And so I would open up my diary and scroll right back to about 2013, retracing my steps, checking every single day, trying to remind myself, where have I been? What have I been doing? Who have I been talking with, right? And friends of mine who reached out to former associates or friends of mine would ask, what is going on? What is happening with Harry? And some of them were told he knows what the allegation is. And I actually didn't. I really honest, honestly didn't. I didn't actually find out what that was until four and a half months later. Um, but in terms of what I've been doing to safeguard my mental health, etc., I've always been one for exercise. I've always been one for occupying myself with an assortment of hobbies. And again, I was not for six when this first happened. I was unable to function. And so I noticed after a few weeks, as I was preparing a meal, 
that I started singing, which was a key moment. It was a very key moment for me. I'm singing, which is obviously therapeutic for me. And I enjoyed streaming many alive, whereby I would play music alongside answering questions. So I started singing again a few weeks later, which was important. I started walking, which turned into running. I started swimming, you know, so these things that were very much in place to uh, safeguard my mental health and just bring me joy started coming back bit by bit, one by one. I'm fortunate that I have a good therapist and a good network of friends. Um, yeah, I suppose that's it. What made you decide to speak publicly now and not before? Yeah, I understand. People were curious as to why I didn't make a statement beforehand when it was all happening. And there are a few reasons for that. Number one, I could scarcely breathe, let alone speak when it was all happening. I very much went into flight mode and ran away. I was in no fit state to uh, collect my thoughts and provide a statement. And also I had no idea what I was being accused of. I didn't realize what that was until many months later. And then I realized the allegation was completely false. Not only false, but provably false. Um, also, I didn't want to resort to that kind of puerile level of playground bullying, mudslinging matches. Um, I set out to find out precisely what the allegation was. I wanted to cover all of my bases. I wanted to know where I stood and perhaps upon discovering what I was being accused of, clear my name behind the scenes before I could return to social media and at long last make a statement of my own. I wanted to make sure I was doing the right thing. I wanted to clear my name as thoroughly as I possibly could before making a statement. Um, I didn't want to, I didn't want to jump online reactively and prematurely because I felt that that could be a grave mistake and cause even more damage than had already been created. So yeah, in a nutshell, I wanted to take myself away. I wanted to find out what this was. I wanted to recover mentally and emotionally. I needed to be in a fit state in order to do this. And this is, is probably uh, obvious, is almost strange, strangely daunting. It shouldn't be because I used to do this all the time, but this is a big moment. And I'm returning to the very arena in which uh, my name and reputation were destroyed. I think I'd probably find it more shocking if it didn't feel daunting, considering everything that's happened. Yeah. Um, I can't imagine how I would have managed if that had been me that went through all of those things and experienced, I guess, the takedown um, as as it happened. Yeah. So and it's it was understandable a, yeah. that it's daunting. Yeah, and it was a complete mess. As I usually say right at the beginning of the Zooms, um, it has never been my intention to emerge from this situation uh, being seen as some kind of flawless angel or innocent victim who has never done any wrong. I think the problem with the uh, online smear campaign, which took place last March, was that uh, there was a melting pot, right? Um, there were very serious allegations uh, being combined with perhaps allegations of a less serious nature. And interestingly, the more serious the allegations, uh, the less true they actually are, right? Almost as though it was impossible to get me, to cancel me, to drive me out of view uh, on the things I actually am guilty of. 
And I hold my hands up and say, I am by no means innocent, right? I started out when I was very young. I started out advocating when I was young. I spent most of my 20s uh, making youthful mistakes in the spotlight, right? With a weight of responsibility on my shoulders. Um, and lots of my friends at the time who were in their 40s and 50s approached me and said, Harry, I'm really pleased. One, social media wasn't around when I was in my 20s. And two, that I don't have a, a huge following like you do. Um, so, yeah, I made plenty of mistakes and there's things I ought to be sorry for. But I categorically and unequivocally deny the very serious allegations that were made. And not only do I deny them, but as people who have attended the Zooms uh, can, uh, can testify to, they are provably false. No one comes away from a Zoom thinking anything other than the main serious allegations were all one big lie. And you have my word. You have my word for that. Right. I think I've only encountered one individual who it's not that they uh, didn't end up believing the evidence that was presented, but they wanted a little more. I think it was I think that was it, really right. So now I have. I was doing this for six years. Right. I started out when I was 24. I started out on YouTube. I didn't even have a Facebook page. Uh, back then. I didn't even have a Facebook profile at one point. Um, I was just on YouTube and I started my YouTube channel because I was hitchhiking around North America at the time. And it was a, I was trying to think of ways I could pass the time. Some days would be longer and more boring than others. So I just started uh, streaming uh, a live on YouTube. Or oh, it wasn't a live actually. I just started recording a video talking about PDA, right? And uh, I guess that video was shared to multiple groups. And then the view account rose. I amassed more and more followers, then returned to the UK, wrote my book, uh, launched the book, and then started getting invited to speak at events uh, hosted by autistic organizations. Schools started inviting me to lecture for them, etc. You know, and it kind of just took off from there so gradually. I barely noticed it happening. And again, if people want to point fingers at me and say, Harry, over the years, you've been unprofessional, rude and unboundaried. I absolutely hold my hands up to this and say, yes, you are right. Boundaries are an ongoing problem for me. Um, and here's the thing, right? When it, I have absolutely been rude to and about people. I've had very strong opinions about people. I've had strong con controversial opinions about people. Um, sacred cows within the community that people hold so dear. And this has uh, got me into a lot of trouble over the years. And sometimes it's a case of, look, this is just my, uh, this is just my abrupt, brusque, straightforward speaking style that happens to ruffle a few feathers. I don't intend to be mean or rude. I'm just saying something how it is without filtering it. So, you know, I always noticed at the very beginning, my audience was divided. There would be people who appreciated a more hard hitting and blunt style of communication and people who were constantly telling me I was being too rude and insulting um, and insensitive and tactless. And I always wondered who's right, who's telling the truth, right? I can think of one person who wrote a post uh, during that weekend in March, who had had a negative run in with me uh, a few years ago, about five years ago now, I think. And I think there was a disagreement about money. And I ended up being extremely unkind to that person. I ended up being very insulting to that person. And they wrote about that experience. And that was an example where I had no defense. And the people who I believe I truly have been rude to over the years have been issued apologies and they know they have, right? This doesn't mean that now I've apologized, you are to stop feeling so bad about the experience, but they have. There have been times where I know I have taken it a bit too far. 
and what uh, and what is what starts off as just a blunt, brusque, and uh, you know unfiltered way of speaking crosses the threshold into just being a rude asshole, right? And this has also never been a secret of mine. I've spoken at length about how my meltdowns would manifest when I was much younger and had less control over my emotional responses. Nine times out of 10, I would uh, launch verbal tirades at people. I'd be much more likely to verbally assault than you know, be physical. Um, and I guess when I first started out in the community, I still had lots to bring under control with regards to my tendency to verbally explode, right? Um, and so there are examples that I hold my hands up to that are absolutely true, but I don't think that's good enough. I don't think that was good enough to cancel me on. But when it came to the more serious allegations, i.e. grooming, that's something I absolutely fundamentally uh, deny because no one was able to ascertain a motive on my on my part. What was I planning on doing? Um, apart from the main accuser, there was only really one person accusing me of grooming. And that person was 11 years my senior and a person I only spoke with mostly via a WhatsApp message for about three or four months. We met once for a, uh, for a good part of an afternoon. No sexual contact took place. No saliva was swapped. <laughs> and yet that person seemed to think within that small time frame, I had groomed them for what we don't know. But when a person came comes forward with that kind of allegation, it sounds really scary. Also, the main accuser made it clear that the allegations they were putting forward were part of an ongoing pattern of mine. And I can tell everybody here that after 11 months of scouring both the UK police system, uh, Claire's law um, and an international police system, there's no record of me being uh, formally accused by anyone. But this was, uh, this was thrown around in early March as though it was some kind of undisputed fact. But I'm telling you right now, there is no evidence of any former partner reporting me to the police for serious crimes, which the main accuser seemed to have uh, seemed to run with. Right. Um, it's just not the case. So I am prepared to be accountable for the things I actually did wrong. And those things are being unprofessional, being a cocky little shit at times, being rude, uh, being unboundaried. I'm prepared to hold my hands up and say, yeah, I should have wound my fucking neck in at times. But when it comes to grooming and allegations of a more serious nature, these are provably false. It wasn't a case that hundreds and hundreds of women were coming forward with the same allegation. What happened was everything was thrown into the same melting pot, right? And also by the time um, perhaps former friends of mine made public statements, uh, not only acknowledging the allegations, but believing them, people assumed that they themselves were a victim of mine, right? So we have to really dissect the smear campaign in its entirety and analyze each individual component, right? When you remove, when you separate the fact from the fiction, you are left with a young autistic man who has problems with running his mouth, uh, needs to know when to mind his tongue, uh, and has been uh, rude, insulting, uh, rude and insulting to many people, hurting many people's feelings, 
uh, via that means over the years. But yeah, I, I, that, that's really what you're left with. And yet people seem to think that I was the Jimmy Savile of the community. And that was a meme that was circulating. Harry Thompson, the Jimmy Savile of the community. Are you seriously, for one moment, putting me in the same category? Trigger warning. We don't do trigger warnings. You're good. As a man who used to rape children in his dressing room after having them on his show. I've not so much as asked for a number when I've been at my talks. And I just say to that, how dare you? How dare you? If that's not completely defamatory, I don't know what is. But people were putting me in the same category as one of Britain's most prolific child sex offenders. And that was confusing people. I know Paula had people in her inbox saying, has this got anything to do with children? And that sickens me to my core. There, there were people who had, yeah, that obviously, um, whilst I don't have a huge following, I have enough of a following that people wanted me to share my take on things. And I think um, that was difficult at times. I came under a lot of pressure within the community, a community that at the time I probably listened too much to. Um, and that has that has been something I had to I had to learn rather quickly. Um, I did, yeah, I, some sometimes some of the people that contacted me were friends. Um, some of them were people who followed just followed my page. Um, what a question to be asked, apart from the, the obvious fact that I actually didn't know you before, like in the way, like we're friends now, like I didn't know you personally before all of this happened. That happened because all of this happened. Um, so I only had the information that anybody else had. It was a horrendous position to be put in. Um, but I was always quite clear that I had absolutely no in no knowledge or information that that had ever been the case. Um, I did, however, as I'm sure many people already know, put, put out a post in support of the victim, the, the victims. Um, they may not like my air quotes, but um, with the amount of time and energy and effort I've put into all of this and um, I, and the, what I've seen, like the evidence that I have seen and it is evidence, it, it's not hearsay, it's not screenshots of text message conversation, it, it, it's beyond what I could really explain to anybody, the, you know, when we first connected to where we are now and, and everything that I have seen, the, the, the conversations and um, the things that um, are evidence, when when you see all of that information, when you have to come to terms with um, the fact that you have been drawn into something um, so horrifically vile, um, that takes processing all of its own. Before we came on today, I had to look back at the messages I had with someone, the person who um, connected us up in, in April last year. Um, um, and when I looked back through those messages um, and reminded myself where I was at and the fact that I was absolutely terrified to just have a conversation with you, I was absolutely terrified. Yeah. Um, terrified of the things that I'd lose, terrified of the business I'd lose, terrified of the friends I would lose. And you know what? I lost them all. Every yeah. single thing that I thought would go when I had conversations with you went. Um, mm. And I still don't regret it, not for one second. Um, before we go any further, I just want to re-remind people that we are not going to be naming people. I can see that there's some, um, we have admins that are managing the comment section that can see what's going on in the comment section. And um, I understand people want to know um, names of, of people, um, but to, to go down that road, to start slanging matches, to start naming people, um, that's that's not going to help anybody. I, I think just there were there were two main accusers, right? There were, there were people who there were quite a few people who came forward to say that I had been 
uh, rude or abusive to them on a live, um, in the comment section, etc. There were many a comment section war on my page over the years. But then we really have to pass the word abuse, right? Because I can, you know, I can remember in the past someone claiming that they had been personally abused by me and I didn't recognize their name. And so I had to go onto my page, type in their name, and lo and behold, their name popped up on uh, a post I wrote years ago. And they asked me about seven consecutive questions. And my response was, none of your business, right? So immediately, quite brusque, like, oh, God, Carrie, couldn't you say, I'm sorry, but I don't feel up to answering right now. I said, none of your business, right? Um, and so people need to understand that people were basing their claims of being abused on things like that in many in many situations. Uh, whilst, yeah, my style of speaking isn't always going to land well, we have to distinguish me being truly unfair and verbally abusive from just being a bit blunt. So this is the problem. Uh, there's many people saying, oh, he was rude to me here, rude to me there, abusive to me here, abusive to me there. But as to the very serious allegations, and by the way, Paula, myself, Rachel, and other people who are in our uh, team and friendship group have scoured the internet for names to these allegations. And they just didn't exist. And not only have I done that, but I have scoured the uh, entire UK police system with the help of a police officer uh, who I opened up a police case with. I opened up a police case about a month uh, after um, everything kicked off in March. And they kept on telling me, Harry, despite what's being alleged online, there is no record of you. Um, uh, your name, you, you are not named as a suspect on any outstanding reported uh, crimes. And so... On, apart from two, we noticed two people were making very serious allegations, right? Both accused me of grooming. One of them accused me of a more serious crime. And I can see in the comment section, people are dying to know what that is. But we will get to that because there needs to be context first. And we have things that we need to address beforehand. Um, but I can... I can assure everyone there is nothing there of a criminal nature. I was receiving emails from people saying, oh, I hear it's a court case now. Good luck. And I hope you have a fair hearing. I hope it's a fair trial. Not that I knew. No, what? what? Right. There was never there were never any convictions. There were never any charges. There wasn't even a proper investigation. Right. There was nothing. A third party based in the UK made an allegation on the main accuser's uh, behalf. But when approached, that accuser never uh, provided a statement. It took me months to locate this half-baked allegation on a police system outside of the UK. It took me months to find it. I had to dig through the annals of the police system in order to locate it. And I was the person who was pushing for that case to get underway. I opened up my own play, police case in the UK and said, I don't know what's going on. Look at all of these posts, right? Um, my friends are stepping away from me. I've lost my career. My mental health has been destroyed. I almost took my own life twice. And I have no idea why my life has been destroyed before my very eyes. So the police did everything they could to help me. And they couldn't they couldn't find anything. Eventually, I found that an allegation had been made and closed down in a British county I've never even visited, let alone committed a crime in. Right. And it took me months to find that. The reason why I couldn't find it is because it had been closed down. Why was it closed down? Because no crime was committed. And it took me months to find it. And I eventually fact, uh, came across the crime reference number and the number for uh, the, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the constabulary called up and it was in a northwestern county in the UK. And I thought, 
what? I've never been there. And then I called up. I said, I think someone's reported me for a crime in this county. That I, I, one, I don't know what the crime is. Two, I've never been to to this to the you know to this location in the UK. And they said, yes, this is very odd. And they told me that this allegation this this allegation was made by a third party, but then it was closed down because. Neither I nor the accuser had ever set foot in that county, right? So I kept on stumbling upon a load of ridiculousness. Whilst I was extremely uh, taken aback by everything and shocked to my core, I still can't quite articulate how it felt. I still struggle because I had to process multiple traumatic events at once in a single morning in early march um friends stepped away from me organizations who previously hired me for work one by one publicly announced that they were um cutting professional ties with me um thousands of people were comparing me to jimmy savile um uh, you know uh, my the, my closest person at the time stepped away from me two days after they promised they wouldn't or assured me they wouldn't. And on an autistic level, I had to deal with all of that change. My income stopped and I had a mortgage, bills and tax to pay. My brain did not know how to process that many things at once. Um, and so I can't remember where I was going with that one. What was I saying? You were talking about um... yeah the allegation. You know, there was nothing. There were never any charges. I I eventually found out that the allegation made by the third party in the UK on behalf of the main accuser was the same third party who um, made the international allegation on behalf of the same main accuser. Right. And when I finally found that four and a half months after the smear campaign in early March, that's when I discovered what the allegation was. And the allegation was rape. Yeah. I think and, when we first spoke, I, um, I think that was what was most shocking, was that you didn't know. I had no idea. I mean, I had a rough idea, right? I didn't have a date. I didn't have anything. It eventually made sense because back by late January, I was disinvited from speaking at an event and I had no idea why. A person enthusiastically invited me to um, uh, speak at an event before a day later saying, Harry, I'm going to have to disinvite you. Something's very strange. You know, a couple I, think I remember of... you doing a live around that time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did, I did a live, right? Because things were beginning to kick off. Um, and then about... A few weeks later, two close friends of mine out of the blue blocked me, both leaving, you know, departing messages saying, I am privy to worrying information. I can't speak to you anymore. And I had no idea what was going on. And my whole world just crumbled right there and then. And I remember not being able to sleep. And I, I don't think my heart rate has been normal since that day, right? Um, and I and no one was forthcoming because the people who stepped away were told to keep everything under wraps because the police were involved. And I'm telling you right now, there was nothing there. There never was. Right. Because I have spoken to every police officer that has been involved in this case. I know what the allegation is. I know the dates. I know who made I know who the third party was who made the allegation. Right. And all of my evidence completely blows all of this out of the water. Again, if you are, if you want a more detailed explanation about all of this, I encourage you to attend a zoo, to attend a zoo, right? I encourage you to attend a zoo. I think some people, I, I'm not looking at the comments so that I can not ADHD off on a, a tangent, but um, I wouldn't be surprised if some people are finding it hard that we're talking about all of this and not sharing the evidence. Um, however, I think anyone who is supportive of the person 
who made those allegations would surely be glad we're not um, in such a public way. I know that if I was in their position, I wouldn't want it out on, on social media like that. It, it wouldn't be the right thing to do, and which is why we're having the conversation now and saying that the Zooms do continue. And um, if people do need more information, a lot of autistic brains um, really struggle with the not knowing. That's what was so difficult about it all when the smear campaign went off because it was shut down. You can't ask questions. You just have to believe. And, you know, you believe the victim. You don't question you. If, if you do, then you are part of the problem. You are part of the problem. You are as bad as him, you know. And, and nobody would listen to any of your friends because they're your friends. And if they're your friends, then they can't be trusted because they're near you, right? Yeah. Um, when I first spoke to you, um, I actually knew, I knew what was, I knew I was going to lose people and I went to them first um, and, and asked them and um, because I was scared I was going to lose them. Um, but I knew I needed to know and that's what drove me to have that conversation with you and I'm sure there will be people here today that just need to know. Um, regarding the Zooms, I, I guess I call them the Zooms because I'm so used to the Zooms now that it almost it doesn't feel like there's anything to explain because everyone knows what the Zooms are. Yeah, um, yeah. But it's there was yeah. people that don't. So what, what uh, when we say the Zooms, can you tell us a bit more about what that means? The Zooms, well, the thing is, there's a strange feedback noise. I think it's gone now. Okay, so here's the thing. <laughs> Uh, the Me Too movement was uh, unequivocally exploited. Can I get you guys to mute? Because there's a really weird gurgling sound, which... Thank you. Oh, it's gone now. Phew. Okay, so uh, the Zooms, again, uh, built very gradually over the course of a few months. So here's the problem. The Me Too movement was exploited. Uh, the Me Too slogan, believe the victim, was exploited because the main accuser knew full well that all they had to do was make a very serious allegation against me and uh, a huge swath, a huge bulk, perhaps even the majority of the community, many of whom are women, many of whom have experienced sexual assault, would believe them without question. Right. And by the time I started telling my side of the story, I was only telling one person at a time. Right. Um, Paula was one of the first people I told in late April and I didn't show Paula any evidence at that time. I think before Paula, I'd spoken to about two people and. I would read from my evidence. I would describe the evidence. And I said to Paula, it's not good enough just listening to me and believing what I'm saying. That doesn't feel good enough to me because I could. How do you know I'm telling the truth? How do you know I'm telling the truth? You don't. Even though, Paula, you claim to have believed me the moment you heard me. I was going to say there was. Yeah, yeah. Th there was. Yeah, oh, I did. Yeah. If you don't mind me just biting yeah, it. So that's great. Yeah. Um, I think that was hard for you, for you to believe when I said that to you, um, that I, that I knew straight away. I knew as soon as I spoke to you that you were innocent and, um, of, of what was being claimed. Um, and there were many reasons for that. Um, yeah, there were many reasons for that. Um, one of them was that you were so determined for me to see the evidence, right? Like yes. I, I asked for evidence on the other side of, did I, I'm pretty sure I did ask for evidence. Um, I'd have to go through back through the chat um, to remember for sure, but I'm pretty sure I asked for evidence from the other side. Um, and I didn't need to see it, not because I just wanted to believe you because you're Harry Thompson and, you know, all of that, that I'm sure the conversations have happened in the community of like, well, you know, because I, I was on your lives, I did access all of your content and it, it wasn't, you know, every, every everybody who knows me knew that like 
I followed you avidly and I was always engaging with your content. Um, mm. So, yes, there were people that were like, well, you know, you will just be the next one, Paula. Um, <laughs> but it wasn't, I know, but like we have to be realistic, like we have to have these conversations because people are going to want to know. Um, and it wasn't just that, it was um, your body language, um, your your willingness to go into every detail like the um I know like, I, I am seeing some of the questions that come up and I know that somebody has asked if I've spoken to um the victims am, am I um you know having balance on both sides um I I actually spoke to um one of the main accusers um way before I spoke to Harry um and and I'm sure that really glad that I didn't listen to them because they really wanted me to. They were really desperate for me to um, hear them out and, and hear what they had to say and, and just believe it without question. And and they did share some stuff with me. It wasn't enough um, for me to um, do what they wanted, which was for me to not engage in his content and warn people, basically, which I wasn't going to do because I didn't have enough information to destroy somebody's life like that. Um, but when I spoke to Harry, first of all, everything was really boundaried. I, I do want to touch on this because I know that you talk about um, struggling with boundaries, um, but you're probably one of my most boundaried friends. And um, and I think it's important that we do have that conversation. I know that every time we do a Zoom and every time we have these conversations, you talk about how much you struggle with boundaries. But Struggling with boundaries doesn't mean that we don't use them and, and we don't work on that stuff. I, I think it's that I'm not a naturally boundary person and the boundaries I have. I think that's different. You I know? have been learnt, you know, I've had to, through trial and error and making mistakes, often publicly, have been the natural consequences for me to really get my brain in gear and, you know, change the way I do things. But that's part um, of your charm. I will say that, like, you being open is why people are you know you appeal to people and that doesn't mean you don't have boundaries i think being open is different yeah being yeah yeah maybe maybe um and that served me well in many regards mm. but it's also been uh the cause of my undoing you know go figure absolutely um, but, but yeah anyway adhding it um yeah so when we first spoke the the amount of detail that you could provide me with um the um the boundaries within i'm very you know i've got a trauma past um and present um i'm yeah i have diagnoses that mean that i struggle immensely um with trauma and um because i'm working on myself and because i am constantly trying to grow and trying to heal some of that stuff i look for boundaries in friendships and and all of my friends are quite boundaried people. And if they are not boundaried people early on in the friendship, I will create those boundaries and, and I, I need them. That's not rules for friendship. It's it's how I feel safe and secure within friendships. And I think it's incredibly important um, that I seek out friendships that are boundaried. And I remember our conversations very early on. I, I, I felt that. I you were quite clear that you didn't want to have a cop not you didn't want to but it it was it, it's little things right when we first started talking um i usually video um that's how i feel most comfortable in conversations and i don't know if you remember that very first conversation that we had over message where we agreed to have a phone call and you didn't want to say video even though that was your preference because you let me say what was my preference and you would have done that um and then when I said, actually, I'd prefer to have video, then you were like, oh, me too. Because you didn't want to put that pressure on me. Like yeah. you you allowed, you recognised the enormity of what I was doing and just having a conversation with you, which now seems ridiculous. Um, but at the time was really scary. And not because I was scared of you. I, I, it wasn't that I was scared of you. It was that I was scared of what talking to you would mean. Yeah. And and I was I was right. I knew what it would mean it would mean that I would have to face up to the fact that I had, I had put something out in the community that was wrong and that was harmful and that I was going to have to make changes because of that. Yeah. Okay. It makes sense. It makes sense. I uh, decided early on that 
it wasn't my job to convince anyone because the evidence should speak for itself. I don't regard there being my side. I don't regard the situation as being comprised of two sides, mine and you know the opposition. Uh, there is the truth, and that's that. Uh, and so I have to be very careful that everything I'm saying can be traced back to um, a source, right? Which is why I started insisting on showing people evidence as I explain my side of the story, which I noticed the other side didn't do, right? Because as I said, it's not about me winning. It's about people understanding the truth. Um, and yeah, I guess because as well at the beginning, I really didn't have a clear idea of what it was I was being accused of and when this incident was supposed to have taken place. You know, I obviously had a, an idea of who was making the allegation. And so I had to dig deep into the archives of my, uh, of my conversations with this person spanning about a, uh, Mm, let's see, uh, one and a half year period, right? And that kind of worked in my favor because I wasn't looking for anything specific. I had to retrace the entire friendship slash relationship. Um, and yeah, someone said, didn't you go on holiday with this person? I did. And that was the only time I spent in this person's physical company, which means that was the only time they could possibly accuse me of perpetrating a crime against them, i.e. rape. And people who, uh, obviously people who attend the Zooms and look at the evidence know immediately the allegation is false, right? But there's another cohort of people who know, who always knew the allegation was false. And that's the people who knew both of us, myself and the accuser, uh, before, you know, during the relationship, right? That accuser made new uh, contacts prior to the relationship ending and clearly fed them a one-sided version of events, which they then made quite, well, made some of it public whilst other bits were kept under wraps, right? To maximize uh, the chances of the narrative being believed. Uh, maximize the, you know, credibility of it, I suppose. But mutual friends knew immediately that the allegations were false because they were confidants of this person. This person who would confide uh, in them all the time about everything. And then suddenly, long after the holiday together and sometime after the relationship ended, and this relationship went on a long time after the holiday and we were in different countries right so can you please explain that one to me why didn't this why didn't this person just block me why didn't this person just uh feel overjoyed that they were finally safe after i left their country right this person had an opportunity to discontinue all contact but no not only did the relationship continue after the holiday, but this person's feelings for me intensified. And the evidence uh, illustrates that immaculately, right? Months after the holiday, the relationship ended, which, by the way, was largely initiated by me. Not this person running away because they finally saw the light. This person fought to keep the relationship alive. This person had plane tickets booked to come and see me. They wanted to bring their child, not only to England, but to my house, to the house of their rapist. They wanted to bring their child. And I wasn't comfortable with this. This was largely what um, prompted me to discontinue the relationship, which uh, for the sake of transparency, was an affair. This person was married. My accountability here is that I got involved with a married woman and ended up hurting their husband as a result of the affair, right? But it was confusing because this person uh, 
delivered mixed signals around how their husband felt about the relationship. It wasn't clear cut, even though I knew at points the husband was hurt. So that is my accountability. And I am sorry to the husband, right? But this person had no intention of discontinuing the relationship after the holiday. And the sex which took place between myself and this person in the holiday was described in the most positive terms, the most reminiscent and nostalgic and poetic terms you can imagine. Uh, several examples of this um, have been handed to the police. In fact, prior to the uh, ending of the relationship, there was no rape narrative because no rape took place. The sex which occurred between me and this person was consensual. And at this point, former friends and associates of the main accuser have since attended Zooms and stepped away from this person because they know that this person is a liar. And also the inconsistency in how the incident has been described. Right. There could be a Chinese whispers effect, of course. But in some cases, this person claims that they didn't realize it wasn't consensual until much later. But then they're describing to other people a violent rape, wherein both I and the accuser knew it was rape. And this person also, in order to convince friends of mine to step away from me, claimed that they possessed criminal evidence of me in the form of a video which depicts a lack of consent and boundaries in a sexual capacity, right? And then when I eventually uh, learnt of the date of the allegation and the nature of the allegation, and I asked the police officer, have you heard about this video, right? And because I, I initially I uh, was told it was criminal evidence it could be a picture. It could be a voice note. It could be a video. I had no idea. Right. I was I was going crazy. Like, God, did someone catch me shoplifting 10 years ago uh, whilst I was doing a consultation with someone? Did I accidentally go to put my hand in my pocket and I put my hand down my trousers and then they took a picture and it looked like I was playing with my I was my head was doing that. Right. And this is also how people know I'm innocent. If I knew, if you break someone, you can if I knew no, hang on, if I knew what the allegation was, why would I waste all of this energy and time trying to work out what I did? Right. Uh, you know, the, the second time I tried to take my own life, my mum got scared and messaged people practically begging for more information. And she was saying to them, Harry and I want to know what Harry did. Right. I really wanted to know what I did. Tell me, please, guys, what did I do next? What happened? Because I don't know. And it was such a weird experience, such a surreal experience. Other people seemed to have, uh, other people seemed to be privy to information about me of which I was never a part. And I was like desperate to know, right? It's, it's, it's with the police. Police reports have been lodged. And I'm telling you again, I reiterate, there are no convictions. There are no charges. There wasn't even a proper investigation. I was the one trying to make sure the investigation could take place. Why? Because I knew that my counter evidence blew the allegation out of the water. My evidence is also the evidence of the accuser. Right. And all of that evidence has been handed to both the UK police and the police force of the international jurisdiction. All of my evidence has been handed to the police. And this so-called criminal video, I have that video. I have that video. It's the only video that exists of myself and the accuser in a sexual capacity. And it is nothing how that person has been describing it. And that was the video, that, the, the, um, uh, the uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, the, the, um, rumors of the video were precisely what drove away some of my friends at the time, right? And they had no idea that the video was bullshit. I have it right now. The police have that video. The police in two different countries have that video. The lawyers, the criminal lawyers and defamation lawyers who have been involved have that video. And that video depicts nothing whatsoever of a criminal nature, right? The crime... I have been accused of rape can be completely destroyed and debunked.
based on the evidence. But the only reason the allegation couldn't be closed down is because the accuser keeps on refusing to provide a statement and to provide evidence of their own to the police. Now, I know there are people here who are going to say, but sometimes victims are scared to go to the police. I believe you and I agree with that. But are those same scared victims suddenly endowed with all the courage, all the strength, all the confidence in the world to go on social media and shout from the rooftops, risking far greater backlash than if they confided in private with, by the way, a feminist police officer? How do I know? They're a female feminist police officer because I have spoken to them myself. And this person claims they have evidence of a sex crime. Oh, my goodness me. Anyone who knows the first thing about sex crimes is aware that this is a jackpot for investigators who specialize uh, in the area of sex crimes. Because how rare is it to actually have evidence of a sex crime, which usually take place in private, uh, whereby the only witness is the victim? Um, only 1% of rapes in the UK end in convictions. And of those rape claims that make it through the CPS, a good 65 to 75% of them, uh, which end up in court, will uh, end up in convictions as well. Because it's so rare to actually have evidence. And this accuser claimed to people they have evidence of a sex crime. But Somehow they're scared to confide in a uh, decent, approachable, feminist female police officer. They're scared to confide in that person. And yet they are endowed with all the bravery in the world to go on social media, yell very loudly with thousands of people. Um, it doesn't add up. And that person claimed to do so because they were protecting people. Well, why did they suddenly stop when I decided to uh, deactivate all of my pages? It seems to me that that person just wanted me away from the community. They didn't think to pursue the charges. Why didn't you think about the other people outside of the autistic community I could have been harming? Because they don't exist, right? Paula has done a Claire's Law thing on me. No previous partners of mine have been to the police to complain about me. And we've we've had lots of nuanced discussions about abuse. And, um, you know, I've known people who have been subjected to terrible forms of abuse. If we think about it, and Paula the other day said, Harry, you're citing extreme examples of abuse, but I still think it's important uh, for the sake of context, right? We know people, trigger warning, who have had their phones confiscated and then their abuser texts everyone on their contact list saying never contact me again. People who have been held hostage uh, in their abuser's house. People who have received, you know, we can think about people who have had threats um, issued to them that they're, you know, their, their abuser are saying things like, I will kill you if you dare, dare go to the police. People who have been pushed down the stairs, people who have been punched, people who um, have had the most obscene profanities uh, blasted at them face to face with their abuser. I there's uh, people who have been drugged, people who have give, been given a deliberate overdose. I have never, ever, ever carried out any of these behaviours in my entire life. I have been cocky, I'm neurotic, I'm snappy, I've got a bit of a temper, I'm opinionated. No one has been abused in the way this person was describing. And the allegations don't stop there. Apparently, according to this person, I used to fuck my family pet when I was a kid. Is that the best you got? Is that seriously where you're going now, right? Because... Your tower, your house of cards is now crumbling before your eyes. You're no longer able to convince people with um, an unfounded narrative because 
everything you say has been completely debunked by my evidence. You're now resorting to accusing me of having sexual intercourse with my family dog when I was a kid. That's 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 where we're at right now. Seriously. And I think a lot of it was um, quite clearly um, untrue. I think once, yeah, I I was um, close to some other advocates in the community and that led to me being provided with some of the information that um, regarding the, the video and the, the lack of um, consent or what I understood at the time, I, I, I had that conversation with other advocates in the community um i once once you speak to harry it's really hard to believe any of this stuff anyway because he's such a gentle person <laughs> um, and can he be a bit yeah. snap i i haven't really um experienced any i haven't experienced any of the um things that other people have talked about i haven't I don't find Harry to be rude or uh, I know that he has been um, and I know that I have been and I know um, that I know that that has been used. The things, the things I'm guilty of, most people in this community are guilty of as well. Absolutely. That's why it wasn't good enough, right? Um, the thing is, I never wanted to advocate inauthentically under a mask. I wanted to just say what I thought, say what I felt. And that has consequences, right? Um, years ago, I kind of fell out with the online PDA community. I know that's vague, right? Or people in it. Because I held controversial views surrounding PDA and self-identification. Um, I thought because PDA is so little understood and under-researched, maybe we all need to stop for a minute, right? and wait until we have a more solid understanding of what it is before we potentially prematurely self-identify as PDA. That was controversial. And also, it it's, it's reminiscent of the age of discovery. The Americas were discovered and every European country is trying to claim land for their own. It seems like that with PDA, right? It's so new. It's such a new um, phenomenon of psychological research. And because it's new, it's not properly understood. And we all have to be honest with ourselves. No one truly understands what PDA is. I don't, and neither does anyone else. And we all have different understanding of what it is. And here's the problem. I based my understanding, sorry, um, as, as a result of my understanding, other people who are claiming, to, some people who are claiming to be PDA, I thought, I don't think they are, right? Um, there were people in claiming to be PDA who I didn't think were PDA. And because so many of us in the autistic community have identity trauma, you know, it feels nice coming across the PDA construct thinking, yeah, that's me. I found me. People feel like they found themselves when they read about PDA or hear an advocate talking about it. So if someone comes along and says, I don't think you're PDA, uh, which has happened, that is like someone, um, you know, stabbing you in the soul. And so that's going to that's going to be uh, uh, taken very badly, right? So these views led to fallouts between me and uh, people in the online adult PDA community. You know, I, I think th the problem with PDA is it's a mess. You know, that's the first thing I want to say about it. I can't tell you what it is exactly because no one knows, but it's a mess because lots of people think they know what it is. Lots of people jump on the bandwagon and I couldn't help but feel maybe... Uh, self-identifying PDA advocates could be doing PDA a disservice, running with their own subjective interpretation of what PDA is, whilst clinics are trying to ascertain the essence. And there have been clinics who have raised these concerns to me, who said, Harry, um, the online adult PDA community are potentially diluting the PD essence that PDA essence that we are trying so uh, earnestly to pin down, and thus a kind of um, uh, rhizome effect takes place, whereby different strands of PDA 
you know, are moving off in different directions, you know. Um, so I think there's controversy surrounding PDA in general, but the moment a diagnostic entity becomes the cornerstone of someone's identity, they're setting themselves up for a great deal of pain when one, someone else may not necessarily agree with or conform to their understanding of, of that diagnostic entity, or two, research moves on and evolves as it always does. And I've seen that take place in the PDA community a lot. Uh, new research comes in and people hold on uh, for dear life to their uh, version of PDA and do everything in their power to drive that research under the ground. Right. So I sit back and watch that happen. And then I come along and say, I think PDA is this. And sometimes people are like, yep, that absolutely conforms to my uh, experience. But then sometimes I come along and say, I think PDA is this. And people say, no, 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 no. That excludes me. Harry is excluding me. You know, and the problem is maybe I'm wrong. This is just my opinion. It's a really difficult um it, it's complex, isn't it? So I'm not diagnosed PDA. I'm diagnosed autistic. I self-identify as PDA. Um, and when you're friends with someone and they have a different opinion to you, that doesn't mean you can't be friends anymore. Um, you can have different opinions. I recognise both sides of that argument. I recognise that self-identifying with PDA can be problematic if you don't have the formal diagnosis. I also recognise that because I have three personality disorders, um, it makes diagnosing my PDA very complex. Um, and so whilst I'm working on the trauma and hoping to reach a point where I can have my PDA assessed, I do self-identify with the PDA profile, but I didn't just wake up one day and do that. And I don't do that in spite of avoiding other things. So I don't self-identify as PDA and say, oh, it's all, it's all PDA. I don't have complex trauma. I don't have other things I need to work on. I recognise that I fit the PDA profile. And I also recognise that I have complex trauma and that I need to work on the complex trauma. And the two live alongside each other. It's not one or the yeah, other. Yeah. And I think um, what happens is PDA has become a theory of everything as far as lived experience is concerned. And people do lump everything together under PDA. I remember having a debate with a well-known PDA critic who said demand avoidance is demand avoidance. And I was like, no, but there are so many different um, types of demand avoidance. I can remember the first time a PDA critic attended a research group back in 2019 who, uh, advanced, this, uh, the, uh, who advanced this knowledge that, guys, there is so many different types of demand avoidance. And I can remember thinking that's such a powerful argument. That's such a powerful anti-PDA argument. And I used to say to people, if you truly believe uh, in what you believe in, your convictions, right, you should be uh, more forthcoming in having your worldview challenged, right? I copped some flack for hosting PDA, you know, people who were cri uh, critical and sceptical about PDA saying, oh, no, their views are damaging. What does that mean, their views are damaging? It means it's, it's damaging to your ego that someone comes along and, you know, poses a few challenges to your to your view of the world. That's OK. I know what I believe in. So I'm prepared to debate this person. Um, it, 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 to be honest, it's um, it, it's bringing your uh, beliefs uh, into, uh, you know, it, it's, it's 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 bringing your beliefs into question, if anything, if you're so scared that a person is going to say something and it's going to immediately uh, knock over, you know, your 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 views so uh, there's so much controversy surrounding pda it's become heavily politicized it's become an identity and it's and and as such people aren't allowed to question it and i think that's part of the fun of academia and research uh, getting to the bottom of things and having the spiritual strength to uh, potentially uh, renounce uh, previously held convictions if new evidence comes to light and i think so many people are scared to do that um, and I think I probably scared people in that regard because I don't think my views on PDA were static. I, if I look at my views, you know, articulated in a video back in 2017, 
I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore because I've moved on from then. I, I don't like reading my book because I, I'll cringe when I hear myself talking about something I would never say nowadays because we're always in motion. We're always evolving. And it's anti-scientific for people to say, this is PDA. This is who I am. All research which points to the contrary is bigoted and blah, blah, blah. No, I don't vibe with that. I don't vibe with that. You it's know, interesting because one of the criticisms and one of the things that people are like, oh yeah, like to give weight to the smear campaign, I suppose, and why ha why you were such a terrible person was that you're so egotistical because you have defined what PDA is and it's that you were questioning it and other people weren't and they were almost using it as a sanctuary to not work on themselves, I think, in some cases. But, um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that you were challenging it and you did shift and... And so what they were saying wasn't true. The fact that, like, as if like you you declared yourself the uh, chairman of what PDA <laughs> is. And it's, yeah. And it's nonsense. I think people massively inflated your ego, your sense of ego, and, you know, to the point where they're like, oh, he's so narcissistic and all of these things. And it's like, I, I don't think, it's almost like they watch two seconds of you with some room stuff in the rumor mill and then that confirmed it and they went okay i've got more and i'm not the only um i'm not the only person who they've made sound bites of and memes of you know there are other people uh who i've been lumped together with who have in my view been victims of smear campaigns themselves you know academics who they have tried to you know, uh, get fired from their job because of their views on PDA. And I think that's problematic. It's like, no, I don't want PDA to become this. Just some, uh, you know, intolerant cult of people who are vehemently opposed to any kind of, you know, d different views. And I, I just think it's, I, I didn't like that, right? So I, now here's the thing. I entered yeah reese green yeah that, that's the thing um what was i gonna say uh right so i can remember entering the online pda spaces back in 2019 just before my book was published and i immediately noticed that i didn't have that much in common with a lot of people in those spaces it didn't feel right and i wasn't blaming them I was actually looking at myself and thinking, what's wrong with me? Uh, it's a kind of double whammy of loneliness because we feel lonely enough, uh, triple whammy, actually. We feel lonely as autistic people in the neurotypical world. Then we enter autistic spaces. I still feel lonely. Then I enter PDA spaces. I still feel lonely. I still feel like I don't belong. Um, so uh, what's wrong with me? And then I can remember uh, working with a clinic who specialize in diagnosing and assessing PDA, who made it very clear to me that they believed a couple of the main online PDA advocates were not PDA in the way that they understood, right? And that actually confirmed many of my suspicions and I got a bit cocky, right? And I ran with this. Initially, I just thought it was a case of maybe there are different PDAs. And then it was a case of, oh no, I know what's happening here. Because PDA is so poorly understood, uh, there are people who are completely misguided and mistaken in their pursuit of self-identifying as PDAs. Um, multidisciplinary team, yes, uh, which I obviously cannot name, right? But there are, you know, I will, I will just say there are clinics who are uh, concerned by the online PDA spaces because of this. Now, I, I and obviously I worked very closely with clinicians. Uh, I worked as part of a multidisciplinary team at one point, just doing the screening and people talk, right? All, you know, the, the principles of self-identification don't apply to the multidisciplinary process, which aims to winnow out the precise drivers of demand avoidance and there are many if i had a penny for the amount of people who didn't know that people who didn't understand that there were many different types of demand avoidance who were so confidently self-identifying as pdas i would be a millionaire right um and i saw that as worrying i'm like 
lots of these people could be experiencing autistic inertia. They could be experiencing burnout. They could be experiencing social anxiety. They could be experiencing um, a difficulty uh, processing discordant noises in the classroom and therefore they don't go into the classroom. So I remember thinking, oh my God. And that's when I almost began to not lose faith in PDA, but I lost faith in most people's ability to understand PDA at a glance, right? Which is, and this informed my position of not being 100% sure about people self-identifying as PDA. I suddenly thought people don't know that demand avoidance has its, PDA demand avoidance has its own unique quality to it. And people also don't know that demand avoidance comes in all many different shapes and sizes. And people also don't know that PDA is a profile. Yeah, you may be demand avoidant, but how do you avoid demands? Do you employ social strategies and excuses and distraction methods? Um, do you have, do your special interests tend to be in people? Are you impulsive? Do you withdraw into fantasy and or role play? And lots of people, you, you'd lose lots of people the more questions you ask. And I remember thinking, Oh dear, I think something's going terribly wrong here. Um, now, years ago, when I voiced these concerns to friends at the time, I did so in my typical ranty, emotion-laden way. And this information got back to the PDA advocates in question, who then uh, fell out with me, right? And in a way, I get that. I get that. Because it's like, if I'm going to have those kinds of views about people, um, if I'm going to have those kinds of views about people, yeah, they are under no obligation to like me or be friends with me. So, you know, I, I kind of... But then what followed from that, right, um, the online, you know, the same advocates in the PDA spaces kind of um, making it their mission to smear me throughout the community, uh, uh, trashing me in groups, um, making posts about me, not naming me, but everyone in the comment section working out who I was, watching people on my page, you know, uh, retreating. What followed was not acceptable, right? And then the same PDA, uh, main PDA advocate, eventually accused me of smearing. It's like, well, I've never trashed you in a group. I've never written a post about you. Yes, we don't see eye to eye with regards to PDA. Yes, I, I, you didn't strike me as PDA as I know it. Yes, we differ in other, you know, ways of doing things, but that person for years made it their mission in life to convince everybody that I was dangerous, I was toxic, I was bad. And the reality was, I didn't think they were PDA. And I didn't believe that self-identifying as a PDA was a good idea at this stage in the game. So when shit went down in March, when everything, I, so I, knew the story from one of the alleged victims and that person had been in close communication with the main person making the allegations and I had been told the whole story before it had got very warped and distorted and uh, exaggerated and had gone off on this whole thing and, um, and I didn't buy it, I didn't back it, I was ousted from wherever. But I watched the whole thing go on because I knew things weren't adding up. In March, when everything kicked off, um, I was looking and I spoke to someone else <laughs> at the time. I didn't, I wasn't in contact with many people at the time. And I said, I, what the hell's going on? I don't, this, this is wrong. Um, and <laughs> I don't want to mention this. <laughs> they said to me, you know, what do you mean? Like all these women have come forward, all of these people. And I said, if you're talking about me, you can name I'm me. I'm talking about you, Paula. Yeah, and that's fine. We, said, we, yeah, said, that's fine. You can, time, you can did. name me. I'm here. Okay. Okay. Um, and I, and she said, but all of these accounts and all these things, I said, I'm sorry, but who other than the main accuser and the person we knew personally, in real life, in person, person. Um, who who else is there? And she couldn't answer me. <laughs> I asked you. 
I, yeah. I, I archived you because I couldn't well, answer when we had that conversation, didn't we? Where I, had to, I just couldn't. It's not, it's not nice when reality slaps you in the face, is it? And, no. <laughs> and she was actually being uh, pressured from other people close to her. And, and, and she shared my conversations with another person who had told her that I was an unsafe person and I wouldn't, I wasn't to be spoken to. I, I literally asked questions. I knew stuff and like, yeah, yeah, and 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 not only did you know stuff, Rachel, but you were told by um, you were you were told by people you knew more than most, and yeah, oh, that was well, still yeah. nothing, when, when right? When it really went down, because I kept trying to appeal in my naivety, perhaps I kept appealing, trying to appeal to people's better nature and go, "This isn't okay. Well, how you're treating someone? This is not okay." Like. You, you've you've come up with this theory about someone's motives without ever talking to them you think and that was one of the person's main tools is cut, cutting contact with harry so that nobody ever went back and asked him because he was so demonized to those people that were yeah. scared to go and ask him ask communicate with him again but when i saw everything much and i was like i and i went back because paul had said but there's all these people and i and first of all i learned, Okay, maybe I've got it wrong. So I was looking at it. And then I went back again. And then I picked apart every single one of those people that came. And I followed all the threads back. And I spent months on my own because I was apparently an unsafe person. And actually, I didn't want to, I knew I was kind of a watched person. I didn't want to bring anyone else into, because I knew that these you people could see, were, were... We've talked about this, haven't we? You could see the impact all of it and and i'm not i i didn't go through what harry went through but um like many of us i'm i am a vulnerable person and um i did go through quite a significant mental health difficulties around yes. that time you were struggling um, and i didn't I was, and, and rachel knew that she knew I was, I was struggling she knew i was unwell she knew that it was having such a significant impact on my mental health and she was concerned that if it became visibly obvious in the community, and this is how bad it got, like this is what is so like unbelievable to look at now, like nearly a year on and, and say that it took so much of my life and it wasn't even about me. Mm. Like yeah. it, it did, it's it took so much life. of my life. <laughs> and it, and it a long time beyond that as well. Like, yeah. and it still has, like I still, regularly have to have conversations with my child because doing everything that I have done and, and I have absolutely no regrets whatsoever and if all of this happened again I would probably communicate with Harry much sooner and mm. and do everything that I've done like that I have no regrets um but I have had to have conversations with family men I had to have a conversation with my parents because when people came to me on my page um I knew that my mum followed me and I knew that that would be distressing to her. So I had to pre-prepare her for those things because I won't take them down. I'm not going to, um, I'm not going to hide comments that make me feel uncomfortable or that are triggering um, for me because it's important that those conversations are visible and for everybody to see what's going on and, and for other people to have the freedom to have those conversations. Um, but in reality, it did have an impact. I have had to talk to my child and prepare him for stuff. He knows what's going on tonight. He know he has known throughout all of the stages in an age appropriate way what what has gone on because I had to prepare him because it took a lot of time out of my life. Yeah, I, I noticed uh, very early on doing the Zooms, this affected far more than just me, right? Um, true victims of sexual assault were taken for a ride. Their trust was violated. Their experience was exploited. People weren't allowed to question, much less disagree with the narrative. People who asked questions were pounced on. Um, and it was, it's, it was, it was, it was, it was yeah. if anyone asked any questions, it would expose the the um, how unsubstantiated any of it was. If anyone started picking it apart, it would all fall apart. So that's, it has to be problem. released so militantly. And, and there's still the odd person you speak to who said who 
is still governed by the same fear that was instilled during the smear campaign. I mean, it was it was bizarre. People were I can remember, you know, lots of people stepped away from me from previous employers to colleagues to peripheral friends. Right. People who weren't even very close friends of mine were just talking to me like I was this monster. It was bizarre. And they couldn't. And they were scared of two things. One, what I could do, what I could potentially do to them, even though some of these people have known me for years, right? They've known me for years. They know they know I've never they've never ever felt unsafe in my presence, but you know, because they were peripheral oh, friends. But there was people who were like, he he's always been nice to me and never did anything bad, and we always had a really good relationship. But now I realize that was all part of his plan. Oh, that, that's the oh, that's my what, God. And this and this is the thing, Rachel, right? Because I can remember uh, a former friend of mine. Uh, I was a close friend with this person a few years ago, and we still kept in touch, etc. Did work together, but they came forward with a public statement, and that person knows there's never been any acrimony between us, right? We had a perfectly sound and harmonious friendship that was boundaryed, that was full of fun and laughter. I think. We only got irritated with each other once in about four or five years. And that person uh, came forward saying, I believe the allegations. Oh, God, I've been manipulated by a narcissistic person. But they were basing that on, oh, but he was always nice to me. It was always fun. It was always laughter. And that's how they get you, isn't it? So because that person came forward and because everyone knew that that person was once friends with me, oh, it must be true. And then multiple women have come forward, became a meme, right? But... I invite people to trace that meme back to its origin. It all came back in full circle to the same accuser, right? That person, was, and that person said, as I said at the beginning, to reiterate, um, these allegations are not new. They're only new from me. And that person proceeded to list everything they claimed I did to them. That, you know, he hunted me down. No, anyone who sees the evidence can see that person messaged me relentlessly for months before I even responded to them. And I apparently hunted them down. That person told me they loved me before I responded. That person told me that we were friends in their head, that they knew me, right? Oh, then he financially and sexually groomed me. That person would call me up playing with themselves, masturbating themselves. That person would send me raunchy photos. You know, in a different country, that person would speak in exquisite detail about what they wanted me to do to them sexually, what they wanted to do to me sexually. That person was oozing uh, sexual provocation. And yet somehow I sexually groomed them into doing that. Bollocks. Take some fucking responsibility. And financially groomed? I'm sorry, but do these people know what that word means? Somehow, I render a married woman dependent on my finances in another country. And that married woman who lives in a house, all paid for, without a mortgage, who, uh, as far as I'm aware, is financially looked after by their spouse, and yet somehow in another country, I render them dependent on my finances, right? And that person, uh, when I went on holiday with them, we went halves on the flight. And that person received a full refund for the flight that they booked to England. So where is the evidence of financial abuse? It doesn't exist. It's a false allegation. Financially grooming, sexually grooming, rape, assault, hunted down, false, 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 false. False, provably false. So when you remove the serious false allegations, right, the, the, the main accuser and then their kind of uh, accomplice throughout the smear campaign who accused me of grooming. But I reiterate, this person was 11 years my senior. I was 29. They were 40. We spoke for a few months, mainly on WhatsApp. We did. And we expressed our mutual attraction to each other. We did engage in flirty exchanges. At one point, this person uh, told me that sometimes they ha they and their husband have sex with people outside of marriage. And I propositioned them. Can we? Can we have sex? And they said no. And that was the end of it. And then this person and the main accuser team up during the smear campaign. 
work on people behind the scenes, pressuring people into unfollowing me and, uh, you know, stepping away from me. And when you dig deep into the allegations, you don't find anything. They're built upon lies, uh, exaggerations, unfounded rumours, uh, nothing. There's nothing and there. One of the things that was said, all these people were unrelated, and it's like, but they weren't, because um, those two people had been in contact for months and months throughout your friendship with the second accuser and the main accuser. Uh, they'd been in contact, like it dropped in and out of things when it worked in their favour, it seemed, and when it, you know, it was a benefit. And then all the other apparent victims from before, pretty much all of them had been um, sold a narrative by, by one of those, the aggrieved uh, advocate from your, who has been a rumour mill of your dastardliness for years. Um, she she had been um, uh, approaching people who had any adverse experience with you personally and selling a narrative. So all of those apparent people that had all these experiences, they, they had all been colluded. So it's not like people were unrelated. They weren't. They had all consulted. They In one of their advocates' posts, they said, oh, there's been a group where we've been compiling files and to avoid litigation. Why would you avoid litigation? Because if it's true, you couldn't, because you wouldn't be yeah, why, why, That's the thing. They could have got me if I'm such a bad person and there's all this evidence of my dastardly ways. And, you know, why am I not behind bars? Why are there no convictions? Why are there no charges? Why hasn't there been a proper investigation? I was desperate, and I mean desperate, for someone to make a formal allegation and provide a statement, right? Also, um, for purposes of accountability. Hey, if I really have done something terribly wrong, I want to be accountable for that. Nothing came. People, uh, as the smear campaign was winding down, were saying, oh, the police are involved now, everyone. It's now uh, being investigated. Let's stop writing posts about Harry. I sat and waited for weeks. I waited for a knock on the door. Every time a police car turned into my road, I flinched and said, this is it. I waited for an email from a, from a lawyer. I waited for a phone call. I opened up my own police case. There is nothing there. And by the time I found the random allegation that had been made in the north of England, in a county I've never visited, let alone committed a crime, in, in a country the accuser had never fucking been to, they closed that down. Why did they close that down? Because no crime was committed there. No statement was made. And then the same uh, third party, on the behalf of the accuser, made... Uh, 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 you know, filed a report, uh, reported a crime to the international uh, police uh, jurisdiction. The same thing happened. When I finally, four and a half months later, got in touch with the police, um, uh, the, the, the uh, detective who was in charge of the allegation, they said, there's nothing here. There's no statement. It's just a vague allegation. We don't know what led up to it. We don't know how it uh, panned out. There's nothing there. And I was pushing. I said, get in touch. And they said, you know, a third party made this. The uh, the person who claims to be the victim has never handed in a statement. And I said, well, can you get in touch with them? I am prepared to show you all of my evidence. And I sent 26 pieces of my best evidence, 26 pieces uh, of well over a thousand pieces of evidence, by the way. Right. The evidence knows no bounds. Paula has seen most of it and has never even flinched because it's it's boring, right? It's really just um, a, a never-ending monologue of the accuser <laughs> declaring their love for me in the most poetic way imaginable, right? This person it's was... not even for you. It's for I'll, I'll be honest. I was kind of expecting at least something interesting, <laughs> like... The allegations, and I shouldn't be laughing because it's it's huge and it's been monumental. And I am looking at some of the comments. I know that people have asked why I, I've put so much time into this. Um, 
and I will go into that later. Um, but later, I expected something there to be something tangible, something that I'm a bit like, oh, that was cutting it a bit. Oh, no, I'm not comfortable with. But there just wasn't. And the only thing that you had to say to me where, where you were like, oh, I kind of lost it a bit there, Paula, was just like, given the circumstances, given everything yeah, you yeah, had yeah. To do up until that point. We've that all done worse. We've all, you know. Yeah. We've all done worse. We've all said worse. There's nothing exciting there. That's the thing. But people would have you think that I am this sinister, dark-hearted, evil Disney-like villain who's kind of rubbing his hands together at the top of a tower, mwahahaha, with lightning behind me. No, it's not really my vibe, if I'm being honest. Um, so, yeah. Okay, you're much nothing... nicer than your, you, you appear. <laughs> no, no, no. I'm, I, I am direct and opinionated. That is it. And I pose a threat to avoidant personalities for whom being negatively perceived is the worst thing imaginable, right? I am a danger to people who have a very fragile sense of self. Now, um, I wrote a post which can only be accessed through my new page where my archive content is being kept. And it's titled, Abuse uh, RSD Cannot Be the Standard by Which we determine abuse. And we really have to look into this as traumatized individuals who feel aggrieved and disenfranchised, who go through life being continually suppressed and marginalized and invalidated. When we're hurt, we want it to be justified. We want it to be real. If someone hurts us, we want them to be an abuser. And most of these people haven't stopped for a moment to think, maybe it's just maybe this is my trauma informing these perceptions, right? Because there can't be that many abusers out there in the community. If um, RSD was the standard by which we determine abuse, everyone I've ever met is an abuser, right? That's the problem. Uh, these allegations were made by people who have not yet learned to detach from their trauma. And I thank Paula for the um, uh, the the, uh, the uh, concept around uh uh, you don't say detached, do you? What do you say? Um, separation. Separation, yeah. I think it's a very, very powerful concept. And it's something that I have to ask myself. Just because I'm hurt, does that mean I'm being abused? Which is why I say that there are some examples of people. There's there are, There are some examples whereby I have spoken to people in an unacceptable way, right? And I will say sorry, right? One person in particular made a statement um, relaying an in, uh, uh, a situation that unfolded years ago. I think it was about money, right? And I did bark at them and I got very close to the bone and I insulted them. I should apologize for that because I insulted them, meaning uh, I didn't try and control myself. I was trying to hurt them. That was my fault, right? And there are plenty of examples of me getting triggered and shouting at people, whatever. But there are there are just as many if not more examples of me being my typical blunt ranty self and people feeling as though that was abusive basing that solely on their adverse emotional response to a bit of constructive criticism or simply me disagreeing with them those people do not have the right to claim i'm abusive but also why why the, it gained so much traction, I think, the smear campaign and how it was so pervasive was that it was vague. So abuse. So anyone that thought you were maybe a little bit abusive, I use bad words sometimes, <laughs> swears, like they'd be like, oh, I don't listen to him because he uses abusive language. And then that would go in the file of that's evidence of abuse because it, and it's like, like rudeness, then anytime someone's no, no, it got thrown in the oh, melting pot. This is what's so complex, and it was just like melting. everything was getting bundled in. I'm like, that's that's just subjectively being rude. Like that's not of course, but when we look at the community, and without me, you know, harping on about trauma too much because you know we, I love the trauma chat. Um, when we look at the community and we recognise that so many of us are traumatised, so many of us have been through so many experiences in our lives that have led to the point that we are at now. So many of us have been harmed that we're not just experiencing this one harm here, we are experiencing all of the harms that came before it. And that doesn't mean that it is okay. 
but it does mean that we can recognize that in ourselves it's why we all have to work so hard on ourselves it's why it's important to yeah. have growth and to work on that stuff because um i know earlier that you said harry about um people wanting the other person to be an abuser and i would i would probably word that slightly differently and say yeah. actually without separation we don't recognize the difference between being harmed by something and actually being abused so yes. we view everyone as an abuser um who hurts us because without separation that the harm is intense and it's overwhelming and it feels like the, the harm is uh, that we won't survive it and that feels like how we understand abuse to feel of course and and mm -hmm. And, and, it, and it, it feels very real, but feelings aren't always a good uh, reality barometer. You know, it's not a good way to take the temperature of reality by just going by feelings alone, uh, because if it feels bad, uh, that could be even if I'm basing uh, my claims of abuse on the fact that it feels bad, that could end up being more problematic, actually. That could end up, ironically, being abusive, uh, you know, it, 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 this will eventually transpire as falsely accusing someone. In my case, my life was destroyed. There's no easy way to say that. Um, I don't like saying, you know, what, what did Philip Schofield say? I've lost everything as he sits at his mansion, still with probably, you know, millions of pounds in the bank. I didn't lose everything. I've, I, I, I nearly had to consider selling my flat even freddie at one point you know my mum and i had to have a conversation you know i would have uh, justified saying i've lost everything if that happened but no i kept the flat i kept the cat um they're, they're, and the thing is smear campaigns can be a blessing in disguise at the beginning as i kind of stumbled through my initial words of this live i said the most painful year of my life but perhaps the most important because it gives you kind of x-ray vision into humanity Whilst you could see the ugliness in people, whilst all of this is going on, the narrow mindedness, the flock like mentality, you know, people so quick to jump on the bandwagon, people flagrantly disregarding evidence, science and reason in favour of joining the herd. Depressing to see. But you see the beauty in people, you know, people who said, Harry, I don't know if it's true or false, but um, I'm, sta I'm I'm standing with you in solidarity. This has got to be really painful, you know. Um, my my publishers were the only organization who asked me for my side of the story, right? That they, they came forward and said, we, we want to hear. No one did. So many people just assumed there must be something to it, right? Um, and I understand why people stepped away. Someone said in a comment section in the comment section earlier, you know, I think a lot of people stepped away because they were intimidated by it and had no idea what was going on. It was overwhelming. And I understand that. And if anyone that was associated with you or defended you in any way was basically told um, we're going to get their whole business pulled down as well and smeared that they were colluding. They knew that you were abusing all along and their uh and an enabler and all of those things. So people will have to, you know, when they've got families to support and everything like that, you know, they've got to try and salvage their business. But it was a very difficult for situation for everyone. Um, for, you know, it doesn't make it okay. And I can't begin to imagine what you must have gone through in those days and weeks when you watched everybody bar a very few select people walk away from you. Um, yeah, people who worked closely with you, it was horrific. I, I, the people way people had, had to protect themselves. Down, it was disgusting. Like the things they were saying, like just horrific, horrific. Yeah, and that's yeah. I can't remember what I was saying before. Sorry. Um, <laughs> that's fine. ADHDing it. Um, <laughs> no, I, I guess. Oh. And I, I tell you what, it was difficult, right? Yeah, most painful year of my life. Most important. <laughs> I was hoping, like, I remember at one point uh, drunkenly convincing myself that I was all to blame, even though I had no idea at that point what the allegation was. Um, and I can remember thinking, this feels right, because I feel so much inordinate pressure coming from the world to accept that I am awful. I am this disgusting, repulsive human being. Um, and it was reinforced by friends stepping away. My, you know, romantic partner 
at the time buckled under the pressure and stepped away okay. very quickly, very suddenly. And now I, you know, when I felt determined to take my life, it wasn't because uh, of all of the personal traumas that befell me, um, i.e. friends stepping away, partner stepping away, um, losing work, having my reputation destroyed, the immense change on an immediate and, you know, a level I wasn't prepared for. It was when I started to internalize the allegations. The moment I started internalizing the, and let's think about what I was called. I was called Jimmy Savile, one of Britain's most prolific child rapists. Um, a man who, I was put in the same category as a man who used to rape children in his dressing room after his shows. You know, um, I was called a narcissist, a psychopath, a monster, a predator, a groomer, an abuser, right? I, my inner critic, along with the outside world, were putting enormous pressure on me to uh, give in and accept these allegations. And I did. And then suddenly I felt as though I had a moral duty to take my own life. I felt that I, it was something I had to do. I shouldn't be alive. If I am, you know, and, a, you know, a, I started drinking again. You know, I hadn't, I'd been clean and sober for a great many years. Um, and I, and I, and I couldn't cope with reality in a sober mindset. I had to dull the pain through drinking heavily, which I did every night for about three weeks. Um, and I just, I just felt like I, I had to, obviously I wanted to, nullify the pain i wanted it to stop you know i remember not knowing where to place myself when it was all happening um i had two close friends visit me that weekend and they watched as i lost the ability to talk i lost the ability to eat i just sat there staring into space with a very gormless and vacant expression and i can't tell people what that felt like it felt like i'd melted internally there was, I was frazzled to the point of numbness, paralyzed. I, I, I just remember not being able to think, not knowing where to put myself. I, I got under my covers to hide. That was scary because then the voices inside were amplified and loud and I had to jump out of the covers, but then I was too exposed. When I was a little boy, I used to tense my shoulders to my ears and guard my chest with my fists. And I, I was doing that for the first time in about 20 years. And then, you know, my friend stayed an extra night because they were worried about me. And then I, my mum wanted me to come to hers, the, you know, the next day, which I did. And I started drinking really heavily at my mum's and I was pacing around and producing a moaning sound, which I don't want to recreate because it was a horrible noise that I was making, pacing, panting, drinking, and just throwing myself at my mum like I was a tiny child. I remember grabbing her jumper like it wasn't enough to hug her. I was like trying to get inside her. Um, and, you know, I, I, I was begging my mum uh, for her permission for me to kill myself. I said, mum, please let me die. You know, please look at what these people are saying online. Because we have to contend with um, a rocky, checkered, turbulent neurodivergent existence as it is growing up feeling invalidated feeling like the world's let us down not being able to do school not being able to make friends not being able to you know uh, survive university getting into drugs and alcohol and now suddenly the the people i thought were my community have completely turned on me and i could not see a reason to go on personally i said to my mom you will all benefit if i die you know and i grabbed a knife and put it to my wrist and she ran over you know um like saying please don't please don't and i gave her the knife you know and i said kill me please you kill me you brought me into this world please put me and everybody else out of this misery look at what they're saying about me online i do not deserve to live and if you keep me alive you are doing a disservice to the world you know you will all benefit the moment i disappear you have you know um like I, I, and you know that. So, so that was the first time. Then a few, then about six weeks later, there was another incident similar to that. You know, where I just, 
I couldn't. And I remember, so the first time I felt like I was being compelled by my inner critic and the people online accusing me. I felt like I should not be alive. I can't cope with, I, I can't cope or pro, uh, cope with or process whatever is happening to me. And then the second time around, it was the uncertainty that destroyed me. And also, um, not just the uncertainty, but the reality hits. The the reality sets in after a few weeks. You start getting angry, and I I was rapacious in my appetite uh, for the truth and for justice. Trying to work out what this criminal evidence was. You know, people were told, "Oh, there's criminal evidence against Harry." Obviously, subsequently, I discovered I have that video, and there's nothing of a of an indecent nature uh, occurring in that video, and I didn't know what it was. And, you know, and I couldn't cope with not knowing. I felt like I hit a dead end. That was around the time Paula and I started speaking. You know, I think I spoke to Paula about two days after that. But I, I turned off my phone and I was making plans. And I went to my flat. I, you know, closed the, I closed the blinds. And then it, it, news travels fast. You know, friends very quickly realized I turned my phone off and panicked, alerted my mum. My mum was away on holiday. She told one of the neighbours to go round to my house immediately, you know, and, and they... We, we had a distressing moment. We were both crying again. You know, I was so determined to take my own life. I just couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't handle it. You know, my people who claim they loved me and knew me stepped away. And I just thought it, it just reinforced everything. You know, I am a pitiful creature. I shouldn't be alive. And it took me ages to uh, rehabilitate my self-view. I had to remind myself of who I was at my core, not who the community thought I was. And that was part of the blessing. It, there, there are two main blessings of a smear campaign. Number one, you immediately learn who your true friends are and who your true friends aren't, right? You watch people stepping away. Uh, you know, I, I, I feel resentful that some close friends stepped away without even asking me to see my evidence or hear my side of the story. They just panicked and ran. And I think that panic and run was the intended emotion on the part of the people who uh, were trying to spread these rumors about me. You need to be scared of him and run away from him. He's going to try and manipulate you with his version of the story. No, which is why I show evidence. So it's not about my words. It's about what you're seeing, right? Very consistent. Um, so I, I, I felt very hurt, even though I understood why some friends stepped away because they were doing well. They were succeeding. They've got children they need to feed. They didn't want to lose their careers by association. I really, really got that. I had some friends who publicly uh, distanced themselves from me, but uh, privately behind the scenes, I've never lost their friendship. They've always said, Harry, I believe you. I stand by you. You know, my true friends know who I am, what I'm capable of and know the truth. My tr and you, you see your true friends, people who just know your heart. You see people who know your heart. And there were people who stepped away that I loved. I loved. And I'm, I'm still mourning them in many ways. And it was, you know, but you have to let go because if they were your true people, they would either stick by you or they would at least ask to hear your side of the story, you know. Um, but you, you learn who your true people are and then your friendships strengthen in a way that you never thought they would. And the second blessing is um, um, it gives you an opportunity to start all over again from scratch. And that's that would be lovely for lots of us, actually. You know, I, I had no choice but to start from scratch. I saw who I really was underneath all the bravado, the cockiness, you know. I'm just, yeah, I'm, you know, I, I'm, I'm just an insecure wreck like everyone else. You know, I'm, I, I haven't got it all figured out. I'm, I'm, I'm only 30, you know, I've made mistakes. I'm accountable for those mistakes. My communication has been poor. I can be selfish. I can be snappy. My boundaries have been awful, but I want to do better. I want to be better and I've learned my lessons, but I'm not a rapist and I'm not a groomer. And the evidence uh, supports, supports my innocence. It absolutely does. I mean, uh, number three is you met me and Paula and got to know us properly. And obviously, like, we're just amazing. You neglected uh, there to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right. um, I know that there are lots of questions. I just thought before we go down that road, is there anything else that you want to talk about? 
that hasn't come up thus far. Well, I just wanted to, on the on the note of, you know, befriending you two, um, th this was different, right? Because this was interesting. So I had my friends before who knew who I was. You know, I, I want people to know, I had ex-partners getting in touch saying, what the hell is this? This is not the person I knew in our relationship. You know, I had multiple ex-partners coming forward saying, yeah, Harry, you can be a dick. You know, you you know, like sometimes you go off on your rants and I'm like, oh, you fucking arrogant asshole, you know, but you're not dangerous. I've never felt unsafe in your presence. Like, what are they saying? Like, you're just a typical autistic bloke, you know, like, I, I know that's a really kind of cheap description. I don't want to be, I don't want that on my resume, you know, typical autistic bloke. It's not got the same ring to it as PD extraordinaire. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I have that a lot. Harry, you're just a typical autistic bloke. You know what? Like, I, you know, um, partners who sat with p p partners, right? Ex partners who I've been on holiday with, who I've laid down on a bed with, you know, ha who have who who know me inside out, whose children I've met, who I've spent endless hours with. They came forward like, uh, yeah, who, who are they describing online? You know, it's 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 just farcical. People who know me, some people laughing about it. Like God, these guys, if they got to know Harry, they'd realise how completely absurd this was. And that's my what I'm resentful about. The people who had the strongest opinions about me didn't know me, haven't met me. They're basing it purely on me, you know, going off on one about people who buy chicken and orange juice. You know, it's, <laughs> there's, there's nothing there. It's, it, this was this was a pantomime um so yeah it's, anyway i'm i'm adhding you, meeting you guys there were previous friends who knew me anyway who knew it was bullshit but you guys were fed a very specific narrative about me so that that was like um that was different for me i'm like shit okay these people are going to think that, that how, how do i put this you know these are these, are these people going to be watching me very closely you know saying oh is that part of his is that part of his plan? You struggled with that, didn't you, for a while? Yeah. That was a conversation we had for quite a long while. Um, yeah. And I think that does still come up from time to time. I think I, um, when I first started speaking to you, I, um, I found it quite overwhelming how vulnerable you were. Um, that for me is probably was the biggest shock. There weren't a great many surprises. I didn't expect to see the ranty um, Harry that I watch on the lives. I because I, I always kind of felt like there was a lot more to you than that. That 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 is an online yeah. persona. And, and that, well, it was true. There, there's a truth to that, but it's not all of me. You know. Yeah, it's it's a part of you. It, it is a part of who you are, but it's a very select part of of yeah. who you are. And there is a lot more to you, just like there is to every other person across the face of the earth than just one persona. Um, but the vulnerabilities that 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 was probably the biggest shock for me. Um, and and I think it explained a lot that you'd got yourself into this situation when I understood how vulnerable you were. Um, and and that was something that I was very mindful of. Somebody asked me why I've done all of this. I, I've done all of this because obviously it's just me on my own. It's not just me on my own. I would never have coped with all of this by myself. Um, I was in a unique position whereby I had an advocacy space, but I didn't have a business tied to it. Um, mm. So I could say whatever the fuck I wanted and no one could stop me. And you did. And, and, they, and, and, they and I did. Um, and, they did. and it was um, not fun at times. Um, but I'm not, you know, I've, I've had some very complimentary things from people all over the community, whether that's people close to me, people who've got to know me because of this, people who I've made friends with because of this, people who are really close to those on the other side who um, 
needed the support and guidance to access the Zoom that they then went and access. I, I didn't just have conversations on the Zooms. I had conversations after the Zooms. People needed a lot of support. They needed handholding. Um, this might be to some people um, just an advocate on Facebook who was, you know, who should have just come back out and, and got on with it. Um, Harry is not just an advocate on Facebook. He is a sibling and a child and 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 he is a friend to to people in the real world. He is a human being and he it nearly broke him and anyone that has to ask me why on earth I did all of this misses the whole point of why I've done all of this because I'm a parent of an autistic child. My pda <laughs> is not afraid to say whatever the hell he wants and I have had to support and guide him through all of that. And um, it's not just about, um, about my child or about Harry or about another person's child. It is about it is about knowing that when you have the opportunity to help someone, you do it and you don't stop no matter how hard it gets. Because do you know what? When you when you are a justice seeker, you don't do it until it gets hard. You don't do it until your friends turn from you. You don't do it until you get a message in your inbox that is quite uncomfortable. You don't do it until you get threats. You don't do it until people tell you that you're going to be arrested. You don't just stop because it gets uncomfortable because that discomfort that you see in other people, that discomfort that comes out in those moments when people are projecting onto me because they cannot sit with their own distress. And I totally understand that. You don't stop in those moments. You don't because Harry is a human being who had his life fucking destroyed and that could have been any of us and more so any of us PDAers who don't always know when to shut the fuck up. Um, <laughs> and someone needed to do something. And that doesn't mean that I think that I did all of this. And, you know, because, you know, if I start being nice about myself, everyone will call me a narcissist um, because that's all that happens. Like if you have an ego, then automatically we're going to use cluster B to identify that. I did see that in the comments and, and it doesn't matter who we're aiming the, the, the you know, diagno chair diagnosis. We're not going down that road. It, it's not helpful. Um, someone had to, and that doesn't mean that everyone has to and that people should feel guilty if they can't or if they didn't have capacity to do that because I'm not special. I'm not some like wonderful fucking anything I'm just a human being that saw somebody that needed someone to do something and many people did lots it wasn't just on me and it was a choice throughout that actually my friends who have stuck by all of this would probably at times had rather I taken a little more gently because I don't do rest very well um but I I don't want everyone to come out of this and and look at it like Paula did this because Paula didn't do this there was a team and I think we all there was a team of us like different Harry different did, yeah so I came under things to the table yeah don't don't undersell what you did as well though no, no, I in the community you're, because you're people be like why isn't why isn't Harry doing this? Like, why isn't Harry doing this? Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and that really bothered me, and I want to talk about it, because why didn't Harry do this? When Harry I was couldn't, quite even, busy. I was yeah, quite busy when Harry couldn't even come on live because he was being attacked, when, you know, anyone associated with him was being attacked, when he was trying to clear his name through the legal routes to the best of his abilities, um, whilst also finding another way to get a job so that he didn't lose his home. Like, he didn't have time to then do all of this too. And that's why we all came in. And and I say we in the widest term because there were so many people that got behind him that were just waiting because actually one person's voice makes a ripple. 
And that is what I did. I created a space where other people could go, do you know what? I, I, I want to say something on this. Or do you know what? I was waiting for somebody to say something on this. Or it didn't sit right with me. Or And, and so many people in the community have had to um, process so much that they'd been through. And they needed a space to do that. And and that's where the group came in. And 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 I didn't actually create that group. I've had lots of people tell me that, like, thank you. I didn't create the group. Yeah, I didn't either, by the way. Like, no, we did. Yeah. We I, found I, I the got group. I credited with it, didn't I? In an abusive message. <laughs> I didn't. <laughs> I I didn't create the group. I was willing to sit in all of this, no matter who walked away, and they did, and I'm okay with that. And they created space where I could create some incredible friendships and grow in ways I probably at times would rather I hadn't um, at in the moment because it hasn't always been easy. Um, and it's okay that people have found what I'm doing uncomfortable. That was the point. It was not meant to be comfortable because what had happened was not comfortable. Yeah, I didn't, if I didn't step out and stop, stop, please stop. Yeah, when just I was stop. Like, and and, and online, online, and, and do you know what? I felt that, and I, I, I didn't take it easily. Like I didn't. Like I, I kept, I kept reassessing what I was doing and how I was doing it. And um, I have worked really fucking hard on myself from being somebody who actually caused quite a lot of harm to people in my younger years. Um. I did. I, I I was problematic. Um and and that's okay. Yeah. It, it's okay that those things happened. Um because I didn't know better in those moments and I do now. And I can use that knowledge to support other people um as best as I can. And that is what I did in this moment. And there were people who were once I called friends that were probably quite close people who um use the phrase this is way above your pay grade paula oh, yeah. and way above my pay grade it may be it, it may be but nobody else was in a position to do that and i didn't need paying i did it, it wasn't about that like way above my pay grade maybe i had the opportunity to help a fellow autistic person who was in a really fucking shitty situation and when people say why why would you give up so much of your time the question i always come back with is why wouldn't you mm -hmm. i don't see any other way why wouldn't you why wouldn't you do that if you could yeah and i think that, that it's just it's quite hard when people say time. stuff quite dismissive sometimes and you're just like like why isn't harry doing it or what you know and you're just like because he's a fucking human being and he just yeah it was fucking harrowing to watch and, and that's alone being the target of it all yeah and to, ad to address the claims that i'm somehow using paula <laughs> and the other people in the group like they honestly it, beca it became more their project and mission than mine at one point i think you know half the stuff that they did i wasn't um, privy to because you know i again people asked why didn't i make a statement at the time one I could barely walk, walk, talk and think, let alone fight back. Two, I vowed not to return to social media until I had done everything in my power through solicitors and the police to clear my name and find out what the hell is going on. You know, um, but I was very busy behind the scenes making international calls uh, you know, providing evidence to the police, lawyers, the, you name, I was very, very busy, uh, you know, whoa, I nearly fell over. I was very busy behind the scenes. Um, so, yeah, Paula is her own person. And so so is Rachel. And so are the other people who admin the group. And we were a team. We were honestly a team. Um, yeah. That's... I think we've all learned and grown um, an awful lot. In the last year, and um, we have. That's yeah. right. It's, it's it's the most painful year of my life, but the most important as well. And I think that, I, and and it's not just me. Again, it's it's it, this is, it's not just me. This divided a community. Uh, people I didn't even know were falling out with other people over 
you know, uh, differences in opinion around this. Uh, this this completely divided a community. Uh, false allegations uh, damage the credibility of true victims coming forward talking about their stories. Um, it damages men. Men are going to be scared that this is something that women do all the time. I I know right that false allegations are rare, um, but I'm I'm scared. You know, I, this this scares me. You know, um, so it's 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 just awful and on that note i'm going to address the question from ha, ha ro, ro, rossi or rossi sorry if i mispronounce your name please just clarify what you meant about trauma triggering everyone is an abuser for the young people vulnerable people that might affect hugely or start questioning abuse when they shouldn't i don't think anyone should um question abuse they've actually experienced uh, I think that rejection sensitivity cannot be the standard by which we determine abuse. So if you are a victim of abuse, yeah, don't question that shit because it happened. All I'm saying is um, it isn't good enough to just assume you've been abused because you are experiencing an adverse emotional response. That could be for whatever reason. Right. We have to ascertain the intent of the person. Um I think these things are a lot more complicated uh, and they were completely oversimplified during the smear campaign. If people were questioned, oh, how dare you? I'm a victim and uh, they're victims. How dare you uh, block? Uh, you should be ashamed of yourself, you know, shaming people for asking questions. It's like, well, people um, have every right to ask a question. And here's the thing, guys, when you actually attend the Zooms, as anyone who's um, attended them already can attest to, they are so laughably and obviously false, the allegations, right? This is what they didn't want. They didn't want you to question anything because the house of cards would come tumbling down immediately. There were no details. They used threats. They used manipulation. They used shame and um, coercion in order to recruit people to their side. They wouldn't give you a consistent story. They wouldn't give you a date. They wouldn't give you a timeline of events. They and wouldn't even say what the actual thing was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just abuse. He's an abuse. Like, what do you mean? Yeah, yeah, did he exactly. Did you in the face or did he? Like, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, there's, oh, there's nothing, there's nothing like, there. You know what I mean? like, what was difference between calling someone a twat and calling you know actually abusing someone in a I don't yeah. know, you know no I know that's the thing there was anyone the, the moment people uh were informed as to you know what was going on what these allegations were it's like oh there's nothing no nope, nothing it was just um one big bitch fest really um but there were a few people who came forward who I definitely have been insulting to or rude over the years, right? 100%. Understand what you mean by RSD. It is excruciating. And it is excruciating. It feels horrible. Someone makes a comment. It makes a beeline to my insecurity. It hurts. That person becomes dangerous. Right. Maybe I shouldn't be friends with them anymore. Maybe I should shout at them. We know what that feels like, but that doesn't mean I've been abused. It means my feelings have been hurt. Uh, and yeah, it's I think there's a difference as well. Like, someone's telling you they've been abused, so if someone divulges to you that they were abused, like you're not going to you're not going to interrogate them because they're not asking you to do anything. Like, Tarana Burke, who started the Me Too movement years before it was kind of went into a big thing, um, uh, on Twitter more publicly, um, and it was about solidarity and sharing their stories so that people could yeah like understand they weren't alone and it was it wasn't sharing stories to go go and get that bad person it was sharing stories to go this has happened to me we need um systemic change we need cultural change we need to teach our children that it's it's you don't have an entitlement to another person's body it was about that not about taking down individuals and if someone is saying, I have been abused, not giving you any details and going, you need to go and hurt that person, take that person, do something bad to that person. That's a very different thing. And yes, we do have to ask questions because you, could, you couldn't do that in court. You can't just go, this person did this to the police officer and then, oh, right, we'll just send them down for 30 years. 
like there's a process and they and people were asking other people without any evidence without any detail to inflict an act on you and and i think if someone's saying something it you need to ask what that person is asking of you so if they're saying this person's done something bad and then it's justifying you doing something bad to them that's a big thing that they're asking you to do and why what is their motivation and why do they want you harmed and it, and if they really have been you know let's fight for better bloody conviction rates um because there you know there's more specialist officers and things like that for people who report um those sorts of crimes but like going oh the conviction rate is low it's always going to be low because if it's two people on their own in a room and there's no one there, you can't just take one person's word for it and then put someone to prison because that is the justice system. You, you can't just take it on someone's word. There has to be evidence. And in most violent sexual assaults, there is evidence and that's why it's important to report them. But um, where was I going with this? Yeah, no, it's a... Uh... <laughs> I just want to. Yeah, oh, sorry. Going, the conviction rates are so low, so we've got to take it into our own hands, and we've got to do it. We've got to yeah. protect our community. No, because they formed a bloody lynch mob, and I'm sorry, but mob rule is not making safer communities for anybody. And, we and, the, and, the, and the irony is, uh, they formed a lynch mob. The, the lynch mob itself was comprised of false accusers. I mean, that's the biggest irony. You're taking matters into your own hands. It's like, well. <laughs> Maybe you're slightly misguided, guys. I need to address this. Claire Billiard Payne says, OK, men are going to be scared of women. Really, look up the stats on violent crimes and who the main perpetrators are. I'm not disagreeing. That's a straw man. Um, in the context of false allegations, as well as the credibility of true victims being damaged, this kind of stuff does scare men, right? That doesn't mean to say men aren't the main perpetrators of violent crimes. That's a completely separate argument. I agree with you on that. You've decided people weren't abused. It's just hurt feelings. No. Um, in some cases, it could just be a matter of hurt feelings. And I actually use myself in, as an example there. There have probably been times in life where I've been abused. And there have probably been times in life where I think I've been abused. But the reality is my feelings have been hurt. And we see this term gaslighting being used ad nauseum online, right? And dare I say, is it being diluted? As a person who was a prolific poster uh, with rather active and busy comment sections, the word gaslighting was used so prolifically that it almost lost all meaning because people would employ the word whenever someone happened to disagree with them, right? Especially if they had a strong emotional connection to a particular conviction, right? But my argument would be, maybe the opposite of gaslighting is happening. Maybe you're wrong. You can't just accuse someone of gaslighting you because the you know, reality is causing your uh, belief to topple over. You know, maybe that's the opposite of gaslighting. Um, well, they bloody, they it's, no, it's a very difficult... And they, they, they were doing that to me. They were making me believe that. They were warping my sense of perception because they were going... Everyone's going, you know, you know what happened, Rachel. And it's like, oh, that was it when the main accuser's husband on in the final kind of blows of taking you down was like, you're the only person external to this that knows everything that happened. And I'm like, I know the fuck all happened. So if I know everything that happened, but then you're all saying to all these people like, yeah, you know, and you're gaslighting them and saying this. It's like, but nothing happened. I know, like, I know. That's... But then I'm the only person in this. You're like, am I again? Like when you're like internalizing, going, what? What? This is like people have lost, you know, um, contact with reality. This is just, it's just. But I, that's what it relied on, didn't it? Yeah, that it, it did. Yes, yeah. so... um, it relied on faith. It mm. couldn't exist without faith. It was a religion. You cannot get reality involved because reality will completely debunk the very uh, foundation of this, uh, you know, 
of this construct of this fantastical construct. And I think that's why they yeah. wanted to create yeah. so much separation between people, so yeah. that they couldn't talk. Which is why um, the the group that we had was so problematic to them, because we were encouraging people to come in regardless of where they stood, regardless if they were completely on um, the accusers' side of things. I nearly had a slip of the tongue there. Yeah. Um, and and people were almost worried about posting in in the group like oh I, I i know i know you're not going to like me saying this and we're like no have the conversation that is what we are here for it wasn't a case of come here and you know love up harry because that's the only purpose of of us having this group it was a space that people could have free conversation where they could say what they were thinking and they could have their opinions and i know that there's some conversation in the comments about you know we were talking about abuse and what does or does isn't or isn't abuse and um when when people are really traumatized um and and i am going to keep saying when people are really traumatized because i think we forget how many of our community are incredibly traumatized and they don't always know it and and that can be really challenging to navigate when you love someone who has trauma um whether they know it or not but when people have very big external reactions to experiences um they are very real and it's not to say that the experience isn't happening it's to say and it is not victim blaming i do not victim blame um i i merely think that we need to separate i am having a very big emotional reaction to this from you have you have done a thing the action you have done is widespread problematic the action that right so this is if somebody was to say something to me so something that triggers me i'll just you know say it out loud why not um so i don't like people saying that they're scared of me i don't like it because <laughs> um, people used to be scared of me and and they shut up rachel or mute those are your two options um Shut up for what? Mute. Because <laughs> your laugh is triggering as fuck. Um, that was a bit of projection there, guys. Sorry about that. <laughs> I don't like people saying that they're scared of me, right? It is not harmful. It's not abusive for somebody to tell me that they are scared of me just because I have a really big reaction to it. I have a really big reaction to it because people used to be scared of me. Um, and And the thought that they are now really really cuts deep um so i don't like i don't i don't like hearing that it, it is really difficult for me to deal with that doesn't mean that the other person has to have a big long list of all the words they can't say to me because they are linked to past emotional events it means that i yes i communicate that with the people that care about me but only after the fact and i wouldn't ever expect the other person to take responsibility for that it's a fucking word and that's where we need to separate this. If somebody rapes someone, that is widespread, recognized, not okay. That is that is harmful and abusive. If somebody has a bajillion, like, let me just get on this scroll of all the things that trigger me and you can't do any of them because I'll get triggered. That is That is not the responsibility of other people to navigate. We cannot live in a constant state of... One of my exes once said to me, Paula, it's like um, being with you is like um, is like walking on a minefield and they never know when it's going to go off. Right. That is complex trauma. That is the reality. And and that was very real. And that was the way things used to be. I worked on that shit because I don't want to cause harm to people. And you have to sit with and you have to work on that stuff. But it isn't just a, a case of waking up one day and saying, I'm never going to do anything that's harmful to other people. Um, because change takes time and it takes having learning skills that we didn't have before, right? When people have complex trauma and they have very big visible reactions, um, a lot of the time it's not just the emotional intensity that is really hard for them to deal with. It's the fact that they don't have the tools to navigate it. They don't know how to sit with it and they do need to work on that stuff. Um, but that doesn't just happen overnight. That that stuff takes time and it takes work. And we can have understanding. But um, to say that something is abusive just because 
someone in our past said that thing once and it fucking sucked is not cool and yeah. it, that's that's the difference for me that's the difference um there's a there's a couple of things i want to address here in the comment section claire billiard Payne uh, says he said he had been rude to people but that wasn't abusive that's them feeling upset no you've combined two of my points there i said in some cases i have been rude and verbally abusive in other cases, I think I've just been blunt and straight talking and people have interpreted that uh, as me being intentionally nasty. So th those are two separate points there that you've conflated. Um, it's really cringe to listen, uh, discuss the matter at hand. Don't start talking about men being scared when women genuinely walk around in fear and often don't report abuse. Again, it's a separate issue that's still a very important issue but it's a different conversation they can't be conflated right are innocent men scared of false allegations yes are uh uh women scared uh of abusive men walking around in fear and don't report abuse for all sorts of reasons yes they're completely distinct from each other right you can still you can say innocent men are scared of false allegations without negating the reality that women are scared of abusers um they're, they're separate arguments and maybe we are going off course a bit and to be fair no but if people are using false allegations of sexual assault to harm men which in this case was done deliberately to cause harm to you i will say that um that is a problem because it does this is something that women have been fighting against for decades to have our allegations taken serious to be treated uh, like any other crime believe women doesn't mean believe women carte blanche don't bloody go through any due process it means when you go to the police the police officer doesn't assume you must be making it up or ask for it because you're a woman and that's what women do that is believe women is about taking us bloody seriously or or the that there is a problem when 50 women all tell personal accounts of their sexual assault without pointing a finger they're not trying to take anyone down that we believe them and go yeah there's a systemic problem here that's what believe women it doesn't mean believe women over a man's word and just throw out due process and just you know send the person to bloody prison without any you know evidence shown or anything that's absurd and it and it's uh infertilizing it's uh it's just women is going oh what women can't cause harm women have and do use that family courts are full of false allegations um where people do it to harm their partner um and to say it doesn't it doesn't the fact that it is you is more harmful to the people who are real victims than it is to it's not like going, women don't have a problem with being sexually assaulted. Of course they do. But taking down one bad man or another bad man is not going to solve the problem because the problems are the messaging within society, are uh, what we tell our children, where, you know, the fact that they go online and this, you know, there's incel stuff and people think they're entitled to. We have to target those things. Because there's just going to be a pipeline. There's just going to be fertile ground for the next people unless we change the the systems. It's not. I, I, it really pisses me off when people go, "Oh, men just need to stop raping." And it's like, well, yeah, obviously, but most rapes are not stranger rapes. They're not like someone jumping out of a, a dark alley and attacking people. It's not violent. It's normally you know, where it's partners or friends who don't understand consent, that don't understand boundaries, have been told it's a oh. um, demasculization if they can't sow their oats or whatever. That is the problem and we need to address that. And I think sort of saying we can't talk about um, women potentially exploiting um, other people's trauma because that's what's happened here is that people in the community have had their trauma leveraged have had their past sexual assault and abuse leveraged to um 
be able to allow one main accuser or another one to cause serious harm to another individual under the cover of believe women and that's insulting that's disgusting and we should all be bloody angry about that that that's being done because it and it undermines the shit that we have been fighting for for decades and loads of activists have been doing this to be treated um seriously when we make these allegations but they need to be investigated like there has there has to be a process and if people are doing it as trial by social media there is no verification for that there is no um way to verify these things so mm. we can't act on them we can't take people do, down and like it's awful like how can people be okay with what happened to you and and try and defend it anyway they no, don't know. I get it. thank you <laughs> Sorry, thank you Rachel. right so <laughs> we've been talking for a long time paul has disappeared um can we um are there questions? Because we're we're all, we're all had this is you know. Sorry, that was my child. I'm really sorry. I thought he'd gone. I'm a reptilian. <laughs> I'm really <sorry>. I am. <laughs> um, That's why I went off my video because I couldn't keep a straight face. I get it. it silly. I wouldn't be able to either. Um, let's um, let's get back to the questions because we're having a great discussion, but. Uh, yeah, I think there are more questions. Do you want me to start looking through some of the questions that we've that have been um, identified for us to go through? Yeah, or if you had any more prepared for me, like it's. There's I, I, I don't respond. I don't like you mind. Okay, there's one just out of yeah. Are you anti-black? No. Can we just can we just squash that one? Please, thanks. No, and uh, yeah, no, I'm not. And I think that rumor arised from my uh, issues with the phenomenon of cancel culture. I think some people assume that because I object to mass shaming um, and this kind of mob mentality going after people, uh, because I favor restorative justice over that. Apparently, that makes me anti-black, but no, I'm not anti-black. I mean, there's a lot of spurious allegations, like things thrown at you that are so tenuous to justify. Yeah, for it. I think people, that people yeah. are so militant in there. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah. that was something that came up a few times, and I just it whilst we're here, it seemed like a good opportunity. Um, the other thing that I kind of that I wanted to mention that hasn't come up yet, um, naturally was um in one of the private messages that was sent to me um when i was quite publicly going down this road with you um mm. involved some text messages that were shared with me mm. now for many people um they won't know what we're talking about and and that's great if you don't you don't but if you do i think it's important that this is cleared up because yeah, there sure. were that you know there will be people who um that would have been enough to just tip them into believing some of the things so how did that come about and yeah what yeah i guess what have you learned from that experience i suppose as well okay yeah um i completely understand why so many people would be concerned upon reading uh those messages captured in the screenshot uh it took me a long time to wonder what the hell i was going on about in those messages as well um in my writing and in my talks i go into detail about um the inner workings of a meltdown uh, about how you know um the inner protector steps forth and shrinks the more compassionate version of me down into an atom and stores him at the back and then uh, uh you know seizes the trigger triggerers achilles heel from the holster points it towards them and fires uh in a state of sheer animal panic whereby all empathy has temporarily dissipated and is now unavailable before regaining control 
and then the dark passenger, the inner protector, recedes, and empathy floods back into the vessel like a herd of stampeding buffalo, and then the true you returns and is witness to the utter chaos that lies in 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 your wake. You know, I speak. I, I use descriptions like that to describe the process of a meltdown. Uh, I'm also a, a kind of person who likes to indulge in dark fantasy and role play. And I'm also a bit of a troll. And at the very beginning of the uh, community, I think I probably hid behind this strange pseudo psychopathic mask in certain situations. At the time, back in 2019, what, five years ago, I was in my mid 20s. I was just uh, beginning to develop a strong interest in narcissism, psychopathy and abusers. And I often role play and method act my special interests. So if I have a special, I remember as a kid having a special interest in like what wolves or apes and I'd pretend to be a wolf or I'd pretend to be an ape, right? I would really incorporate my interests into my everyday uh, living. And so it's not problematic in the slightest if I have a an innocuous um, or uh, inoffensive special interest. But the moment I develop a special interest in something more dark and sinister and start uh, role playing it to people, sometimes without warning, that is going to understandably be, uh, you know, interpreted as something at the very least questionable right so these screenshots were captured out of context also a screenshot of me kind of role playing a meltdown with another friend and in the you know and people are probably thinking what the hell is this you know um so saying things like oh i'm getting an urge to abuse someone i can feel it coming over me i need my fix um uh, and talking to someone like i need to make you uh, eat out of the palm of my hand. Um, I, enjoy, I enjoy the thought of you, uh, you know, suffering, blah, blah, blah. But the thing is, out of context, it looks really worrying. But I've got other PDA friends with whom I engage in this kind of role play all the time, right? So, you know, uh, I had a special interest in uh, Jack the Ripper a couple of years ago, and I would pretend to be Jack the Ripper. Right. Even to myself, I'd look into the mirror and say, I am Jack. I, I'm not really. And I would me and a friend, I would pretend one of my friends was a, 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 a lady of the night in the 1800s, a prostitute looking for the business. And I'd be Jack the Ripper, like I'm going to slit your throat and suck the blood out of your neck. I don't actually do this stuff. It's just part of the fantasy. Now, I seem to have more voluntary control over it now. But years ago, I would just um, I would just dip in and out of fantasy. You know, in, in my family home, I would just jump from one character to another. Um, and I think there's a combination of role play and fantasy. There could be kernels of truth to it. As I said at the beginning, um, of this explanation, I have spoken about the inner workings of a meltdown and how you do feel in that moment you want to deprive a person of, uh, you know, their well-being. But you feel as though, uh, you know, your your anger is justified and your behaviour is justified. There are element, there are kernels of truth which are based in, you know, descriptions of neurodivergent meltdowns, but spiced up, spiced up with um, you know, elements of whatever my special interests are at the time. At that time, psychopathy, narcissism, abusiveness. And in some of the screenshots, I was just um, rehashing quotes I'd heard from narcissists and psychopaths being interviewed, right? So it wasn't even original in many ways. And, and I think part of it was a mask. Uh, deep down, I feel quite, you know, vulnerable and scared and timid. And then oh, maybe if I talk like this, it will make me seem quite impressive or cool. No, it doesn't, Harry. You just sound like a cringy idiot. And now you're scaring people. And look, years later, when your name is being destroyed online, um, people dredge that up. 
And I've got no defense for that. It's like, oh, shit. Yeah, I did say those things. They are my responsibility. Sorry, guys. But the reality is that I'm not this uh, sadistic, evil bastard who um, wants to subject people to a range of, you know, exquisite tortures and blah, blah, blah. It's, it's part of role play. I'll still do it. I've got a very close friend and we like to engage in dark role play together. And the things we say are worrying. And if you took them out of context, fucking hell, right? Um, it, they, they look really worrying. If you take sound bites, you know, I think my problem was I started talking like that to a person who didn't know me very well. Um, and yeah, I, I, I apologize to that person. I, I feel like I have an apology to make to that person because they would have been very worried. Uh, we fell out, that person and I. And yeah, it was worrying. It was disturbing. But, you know, there wasn't anything true to it. I don't have those urges. I'm not a sadist. You know, um, I'm not Jack the Ripper either. You know, um, I'm not a wolf. I'm not, you know, I, I throw myself into fantasy and role play. And I'm a... It pains me to say I'm something of a PDA cliche and that sometimes it's difficult to distinguish fantasy from role play. These days, I feel I have total voluntary control over it and I can turn it on and off at will. But clearly, uh, five, six years ago, uh, I wasn't as aware or in control of it. Um, I hope, Paula, that that's a satisfactory explanation. It is, yeah. Um... I think most of the other questions are things that people have asked, but I think um, it's probably a good time to say there's quite a lot of questions. We may not get to all of them. Yeah. And I think um, whilst I don't want to suddenly cut people off who are in the middle of their questions, I think mm. it needs the last few need to come in and we will get through as many of them as we can, but there does need to be a cutoff point. So like, a couple more minutes and then I was gonna say something on those messages is that that's the only thing I've ever seen that was incriminating in any way against Harry about like any that gave a they gave any kind of backing to what was being said. And when I first saw them I was like, well what is this? And I asked you straight away. I was like Yeah yeah you asked me right and but they, they have been wielded against people and shown to people who have felt, you know, felt like they'd been hurt by Harry in some way, <laughs> whatever felt like. I don't want to minimise whatever, but, you know, have had some sort of falling out or whatever. Yeah, they experienced they distress, used. for sure, in some way. Yeah, they did, they did not, I did not help myself. Dark. Yeah. That's what's fucking dark, is that people are pouncing on people who were clearly upset about something, a breakup of a friendship or relationship or whatever, and then shoving that under their nose and going, this is the type of person he is. And I, yeah. and then it completely like. It snowballed and it did not help me. And relationship, yeah. I did not help myself. And that's the thing. It, it was, it was just a, a silly moment where I thought, uh, for whatever reason, saying that was kind of, oh, this is, this is cool. This is the right thing to do. I'm going to say this, you know, like I, I was just being a cringy loser really in those messages. I wasn't being a, and also let's think about this. Anyone who knows the first thing about abusers and psychology and those kinds of individuals, do they just out their methods to people they barely know? Right. It, it, they don't. Right. It, that was me being naive and stupid as opposed to being menacing and sinister. Um, <laughs> you know, the amount of PDA kids I work with who, self-identify as uh you know witches who do dark magic and say they want to put spells on people uh, i've met, met plenty you know kids who self-identify as psychopaths and you ask why and it's because psychopaths are invulnerable uh being autistic means i'm vulnerable you know so there's lots of elements of that going into it but i look back and think harry you cringy idiot shut the fuck up you know but there's no I, i'm not i'm not a sadist yeah, but um, you're not doing that. It's just I, 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 I like wrong person. Person. Yeah, I did it to the wrong person. That's the thing. And there's people I I, I do I still I no. don't do much, but I still do that. I still do things like that. I'll say something weird and sinister. People who know me know that I'm random as hell. And I do I I say random shit. Um I like your random shit. Yeah, yeah. I say random shit. I, I start conversations with things that people are like, 
wait, what? I don't know. You know, that's that. Um, anyway, let's again, let's let's try and stick to the question. Oh, yeah. Um, let me go through some of these questions and see. Um, there were quite a few people that maybe weren't here at the beginning that were unclear about what you've been accused of. OK, so I have been accused by, you know, quite a few people over the years of being rude, uh, having bad communication, uh, you know, being, I don't know, aggressive and angry and blah, blah, blah. Many of those things are true. Uh, there's a person in the comment section today I have personally issued an apology to because I believe I spoke to them in an unacceptable way. And I'm sorry to anyone who I've spoken to in an unacceptable way and have issued apologies to people over the years. If I think, yeah, Harry, you know what, that that mother in a group who was asking for help, uh, you know, was struggling and you just came in full guns blazing like, you know, how dare you do this to your kid, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, there's plenty of people I think I need to apologize to. Then on a more serious note, to, you know, contrary to popular belief, two people accused me of grooming. Um, and one of those people also accused me of rape. And both of those allegations are completely false. And the evidence uh, substantiates that. So, yeah. And, and again, I was a Marmite figure in the community. I was not everyone's cup of tea. And that's absolutely fine. Uh, sometimes, sometimes I think I was deliberately antagonistic in my approach to advocacy and should have expected backlash. Some of the sometimes the backlash was funny. Other times it was distressing. Um, but yeah, hey ho, I'm a controversial Marmite figure who sometimes was very rude to people, tactless, insensitive. Um, those things are true. What's not true is that I'm a rapist or a groomer. Uh, that's provably false. Um, OK, so next question. Um, so somebody has asked whether I have um, spoken to the victims to keep it balanced. And I think I covered that earlier when I clearly said that I actually spoke to them way before I spoke to you. And and one one of those people was a friend of mine before all of this happened. Um, so, that yes, person was my closest friend for the year. Yeah. yeah. So Harry and her friendship. And yeah, yeah. The, with the main accuser as well. Yeah. So, the, yes, we have we have the other side. It's yeah, really these two these two women know to hear the third side. These two know both sides intimately more than anyone else. You know, they they, they it, yeah. So yes to that question. Um, Harry, are we going to see you back on social media again? I don't know, probably, but I'm going to do things differently. You know, I need to bear in mind my new boundaries. Um, and I need, uh, you know, I don't, I don't yet. Yes, I don't know. Yes, but differently. Let's just keep it at that. Yes, but in a different format. Probably. I don't know. I'm not really thinking about that. I don't really think further than two weeks. And that's ahead. okay. It's okay that you don't know. Um Harry, what are your out? This is lots of questions in one message. So, what are your outcomes in all this? Is your main goal to clear your name? And then it yeah. goes on to say raise awareness and educate people and professionals about PDA. Yeah. Admit you made a mistake. Validate yeah. people's experiences. Yeah. Have boundaries between the two. I think that's where personally you need to ask what your aims are going forward. Yeah. Yes to everything. Yes to everything. Um, I want to use this experience to educate people right i want to acknowledge where i've gone wrong um and there are places i have absolutely gone wrong uh, there, there are examples of me uh you know go, you know making terrible mistakes and there are things that i said and did uh, throughout my advocacy life that i'd never say and do now i'm the kind of person who has to learn through direct experience but also um being the victim of a smear campaign and false allegations uh, has inspired me to raise awareness and educate people in these areas. Um, and yeah, I, I want to clear my name, obviously. So yes to all of those things, pr pretty much. Okay, L lots of questions that are similar. So I'm going to try and chunk it all down into... Um, I would like to know if Harry has had many apologies from other advocates and people in the community who jumped on the bandwagon of supporting the accusers and detaching themselves from Harry. Um, I've had quite a few apologies at this point. 
Not from advocates, though, if I'm being honest, uh, unless you guys can think of something I'm forgetting. I have had apologies and they have been touching like you can't imagine, especially the apologies coming from people who were once friends, close friends with, um, you know, the, the accusers uh, and people who were once firmly on the side of the uh, accusers. Um, th those apologies mean so much to me because you can't help but commend them for their bravery and, you know, their you know, willingness to come forward and, you know, question what they've been told and break away from, you know, a, a toxic situation. But from actual advocates, no. I know that there are advocates at this point who know the truth, but I think they have decided to just move on. And that's that's okay. I mean, do I want an apology from certain advocates? I think it depends. I don't, I don't know. I haven't, though. So I can't just wait around for it. You know, I've got a, I've got a life to live. What was the motivation for the smear campaign? <laughs> I don't think anyone can be 100% certain. Um, I think... I think there were elements of... Now, remember, these... Um, these two women were married. And I think they did form strong attachments to me and perhaps they wanted to save face. Um, maybe there was difficulty on their end taking responsibility, difficulty acknowledging and embracing they have they may have done some wrong in all of this. Um, and I don't know, I guess maybe f feeling rejected on their part, you know, uh, you know, delivered quite a powerful injury uh to their sense of self so it's difficult this is just uh kind of conjecture based on what we do know uh and, and when people say you're not accountable it's moments like that it's moments like that when we can recognize that what they have done is absolutely not okay um but when you can still recognize no matter how much you have been harmed by everything that has happened you will still sit there and recognize the distress that they likely felt when when you stepped away from them and yeah. that, that doesn't make their actions okay because we cannot That's... validate we cannot yeah. validate the harm but we can validate the the distress that caused yeah. the harm well this the thing is like with regards to the main accuser right uh, when you actually see how the breakup transpired, I don't know about other people, but my heart does bleed for them. You can really see how attached that person had become to me. And obviously during the breakup, that person was doing everything in their power to convince me to uh, stay in the uh, relationship slash affair. Obviously, the, the serious rape and grooming allegations didn't come until that person realized, yeah, they weren't going to sway me either way you know and I, I wanted to be I wanted to be friends with these people I didn't go out my way to fall out with them you know I was perfectly happy being their friend and being in their life um even to the point I missed them when when they when they disappeared you know uh mainly the you know, main accuser you know because we we did get very close we spoke solidly for a whole year and you know we we shared some times but we weren't meant to be I wasn't in love with this person I wasn't prepared to drop everything in my life to go and be with them especially if they weren't prepared to uh leave their family you know they have a, a husband and multiple children in another country i wasn't prepared to sacrifice my life to go over there for something that may not be guaranteed um so you know your heart bleeds for them when you can see that they were affected by uh you know romantic rejection or something else you know with regards to the second uh, accuser accusing me of you know not rape but but just grooming i mean that i mean if you actually see how we fell out it's 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 borderline ridiculous you know um you know i i, <laughs> I didn't I, believe I, it when i first saw how yeah, you, you know, people are like that is it i'm like yeah that oh, is it man. I, you know um so the, yeah. you know so I remember when you showed Rachel and then I was I remember speaking to Rachel and being like I didn't know how they fell out and and nothing 
And when you told me, I was like, where's the rest of it? I exactly. think that's when it sound like someone's missing. What? 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 No, no, exactly. So that, that was it. And the thing is, there was um, shit, shit talking and shit stirring going on between the two accusers. Mm. You know, they, they, were, they once fell out with each other and yeah. were calling each other narcissists. You know, so apparently... And we, we probably need to, on that note, the narcissism thing, we probably need to address that. Um, uh, but no, the the fallouts were ridiculous. That's the thing. People who know the evidence, people who know the story can see this for what it is. And they're waiting. They're, I think people are waiting for, so at which point did he pull out a knife? At which point did he stab you? At which point did he hold you down? At which point did he, uh, you know, call you a stupid, fat, ugly so-and-so every single day? That that didn't happen. They were inconvenienced by my lack of availability. You know, I think that that's really what it boiled down to. And but and it's, it's so it's too easy for them to say he groomed me into loving him or whatever. You know, no, you're responsible for your own feelings. Both um, of them pursued personal relationships with you. They, they did, and, 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 and they. So and I don't know they, how the hell they failed them by being nice to them. Like they, they failed, so that they failed. And then they had this problem of, oh, shit, have I fucked my marriage up? Uh, you know, and then they get together and whip up this. And one thing they didn't do, they never took any accountability for anything. It was always he always, yeah. did this, hoodwinked me to the point where I was completely in, like powerless to yeah. his charm. Because and it's like your whole bloody personality is based on this look, your pervasive drive for autonomy but you had no autonomy when it came to harry thompson what he just what he's got like mm, i don't know puts you under a spell as as well, this is what i mean it's like what you everyone like they're completely overestimating my ability <laughs> they're trying to attribute some kind of supernatural powers honestly i am <laughs> Not that special. Like it's flattering. It's like apparently I'm the narcissist. I These guys are say. obsessively trying to make out that I'm this supernatural being who puts everyone under their spell. Like at one point I was like, Am I under my own spell? You know, <laughs> I'm just a person. You know, I need a piss. You know, I, I get thirsty a lot. You know, um, I like twiddling this metal thing around in my fingers. You know, I'm I'm very human, you know. On you uh, not being that special. Um yeah. Doesn't Harry have a diagnosis of narcissistic personality disorder? And I, and then it speaks about um, what that diagnosis means, which I won't, like, people can research that themselves. But so maybe he is missing the point entirely about how these people feel, regardless of gender and the sheer woman-focused issue here. I think more respect would come from not being in a defensive standpoint, but a point of reflection and self-critique to understand your own features and recognise the impact it has on others. Okay, I do not have a diagnosis of narcissistic personality disorder. Um, I've also, uh, you know, the, the narcissism stuff, God, is that topic becoming wearing for me after all these years? You know, at the very beginning of my advocacy career, I was, it was a huge special interest of mine, you know, and so I was already ready to leave that behind. But no, I started receiving um, uh, narcissism insults almost from the get-go um to the point it really did start giving me a complex and i had to look into it myself i spent an ungodly amount of money uh paying for assessments to try and get to the bottom of this you know and no no uh, now look the thing is I've, I've got some i've got some narcissistic traits as we all do you know narcissism is, is a spectrum are you right? clinically um, significant the traits you have no, 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 yeah, let's think um uh i've I'm, I can be very self-confident when I know I'm good at something. You know, I know I'm very honest about what I'm good at. You know, um, I know I'm a good writer. I know I'm a good speaker, you know. Um, but I'm also very honest about the things I'm bad at. You know, there's no delusional grandiosity there. You know, I don't think my uh, supreme ability is consistent, if I even have supreme ability at all, which I don't think I do, right? Um, I think I'm a good speaker. I think I'm a good writer. But there are lots of things I'm not very good at. I'm very in touch with my ability and lack thereof. Um, I am a flamboyant show off. I clearly <laughs> like being on stage talking to people about things I find interesting. Um, 
you know, I clearly like that. But do I like the spotlight and being center of attention all the time? No, that stops when I finish the talk. Otherwise, leave me alone. Um, I, um, you know, so it's it's like yeah, that you're gonna you're gonna find traces of uh, egotism in me, probably more so than the average person, right? Because I am a I, I am a performer. Um, and I am very much in touch with the things I'm good at. And I can be honest about them. Yeah, I'm good at that. Fucking hell. Um, you know, I've been working out again recently and I can't stop, you know. <laughs> you know. So, Checking yourself out. Yeah, no, I can. Like, I'm like, damn, you know, this is this is paying off, you know. But, you know. <laughs> um, so... Right. But, um, you know, I, I don't have the same fear. I mean, I used to be terrified. Now, also, some c accusation I've received is that I stigmatize cluster B oh. personality disorders. Oh, yeah. Say this now. <laughs> um, so the thing is... Um, what did you I, say yeah. earlier, Paula? I that? feel so thoroughly stigmatized. Like, OK, so like... First off, I I am cluster B. Like, I am cluster B. I'm all of. I'm not. I'm. I have borderline personality disorder. I also have two other personality disorders because one wasn't enough. Um, however, I don't. I don't experience. I I don't. I don't. I don't feel um, that. Yeah. If anything, um, personality disorders is probably one of the the most talked about things that we have in our friendship because well because it's my special interest and I don't fucking shut up about it um but <laughs> also because they are fucking fascinating and being cluster b doesn't make me a bad person and harry is so understanding of the diff because I still like I'm borderline like hello I'm, I'm gonna I'm gonna spiral quite a lot um and and all of my friends have been really oh, oh they hold space they they are fucking awesome and harry included and um does does he sometimes um is he not able to hold the amount of space i need um i need a lot okay oh, i need a lot i have more than one friend for a reason because i would i it's a lot okay um and when you are boundaried and when you are healing, you recognize that and you can communicate that with each other. Like if I need more, like I I will, I, I, I don't just spiral with one person. I share it out, right? You've got to share it out because if you put all of that on one person, it's too much. And I think if people are expecting Harry to not talk about um, personality disorders and cluster Bs, then um, that would, that, that, that's not possible. Um, if people want him to be accused accused of being a narcissist, like the reality is, he's going to talk about cluster Bs because everyone keeps saying he's a cluster B when he's not. Yeah, so he's the amount of armchair diagnoses of narcissism I've received is like, I I wouldn't I didn't end up stigmatizing it. I came to fear it because if people were throwing that word at me as an insult. By the way, uh, this was a recurring theme of the the two accusers right calling me this um in the end i'm gonna think shit maybe being a narcissist is not a good thing to be if people are so quick to call me it and then run away and tell everyone else oh he's a narcissist run up you know i i had to really and and also Cluster B personality disorders have been a special interest of mine. And so when I delve into an interest, I try and do so objectively. I don't put any negative and positive spin on it. I'm not necessarily actively trying. I, I like the thought of destigmatizing cluster B personality disorders, but can we please, um, can we please uh, remain within reality? Can we not make any lofty, unfounded claims oh, the about sugar coating. yeah sugar coating uh, yeah. in our pursuit of destigmatizing them but also yeah i i fundamentally believe personality disorders are the result of complex trauma setting in very early on in a person's formative years for all sorts of reasons like i am behind 
the central tenets of you know the destigmatization of the cluster B movement. I I believe it's trauma as well, but I'm all you know I. To People who have PDs have still got to take responsibility for their actions, like every other fucking human on the planet, though. Yeah. And, yeah. I, and I think when we look at de like like, for me, um, my borderline led me to seek help, um, and that led me to get help for my other personality disorders. Um, and I, I do massively want to grow and to work on my shit. That doesn't mean I've always, I've always been in that place. I didn't always want to work on my shit. Um, I didn't, and there were times where I could be quite problematic because of that. Um, we have to be accountable for our past actions um, as we grow and as we heal, and for the actions that continue. I am not a perfect person, and I never will be. I will always have a borderline presentation. I will always feel things more intensely than other people. Um, and that is going to, at times in my life, cause harm to other people, though I do my very best to prevent that from happening. Um, as human beings, we are going to harm each other like we are. That doesn't mean that I am, before anyone jumps on this, I'm not saying that that makes it okay. It doesn't. But we can hold people in a compassionate place and still hold them accountable. It's yes. called having boundaries. Yes, exactly. Um, oh, whoops, I think I nearly... Uh, yeah, Rachel Evans. Um, I am taking responsibility for the things I've done wrong. I am not going to take responsibility for the things I didn't do, right? There is plenty of evidence to suggest the serious allegations were false, but the allegations of a less serious nature, um, are, are some of them are true. And I take responsibility for them and have issued apologies for them without excusing myself. So, yeah. Just, were the police involved? No. Well, it, it's, I mean, I said no quite reactively then. Right. So the police were notified. Now, a uh, an organization who have a duty, who, who regard themselves as having a duty to safeguard and report a crime, um, contacted the police on the part of the main accuser because in their words they felt they had a safeguarding duty etc and therefore obli felt obliged to you know alert the police um i know who this third party is by the way i have spoken to them i know who they i know them but their identity shall remain anonymous but the main accuser never followed up the allegation and never provided a statement to the police, despite being approached, I believe, multiple times. Uh, a county in the northwest of England, uh, their constab local constabulary were notified by the same third party on behalf of the main accuser, but I'd never visited this county and the main accuser has never set foot in the United Kingdom. So that allegation was just closed down because obviously no crime was committed there. But I was, I opened up my own police case and they did everything in their power to uh, pursue all of this and try and find some clarity for me. But because I wasn't the person who made the allegation, even though I submitted 26 pieces of my best evidence to the police, they were still unable to close down the allegation because the alleged victim never provided a statement. And the police told me the allegation was completely vague. There was nothing to it. There was no substance to it. We don't know how this rape took place, you know. And so there was ne what I'm saying is, uh, there were there was never any proper or formal investigation because the police had nothing to work on i was the only one who submitted the evidence um not the other side the other side never even gave a statement whereas i was giving statements and providing evidence so i wanted the police to get involved but i was unsuccessful in closing the allegation down because i wasn't the alleged victim um, 
on a slightly more comical um question can we get a statement from from the dog (laughs) can we get a statement from the dog regarding the situation um the dog is now deceased i'm afraid to say not by not by not by my hand or other (laughs) what did you do gonna go no comment on that one it wasn't me i didn't do it it's another false allegation um no the dog was a cherished family dog uh you know we had great relations of a, of a platonic nature um yeah r.i.p <laughs> so are you okay harry are there any victims um very separate questions clearly are, are you okay are there any victims um I'm, am I okay? Oh, let's start with, am I okay? Oh. I'm doing better now than I have. I'm doing better now than I have done in the past year. I get stronger every day. Sometimes I feel like I've turned a corner and then a week later i might suddenly have a really really bad week i might remember something or rather things i haven't yet processed uh you know rise to the surface and i've got to be grateful for that like i said i've got a very very good therapist i've got a wonderful uh you know network of supportive friends um and a supportive family and obviously i feel indebted to all of those people because if i didn't have that I don't know, you know, I, I don't know where I'd be, really. Um, I, If I'm having a bad day, I think back to how things were at the very beginning. Um, I think back to how things were at the very beginning. And anything is better than that. Anything is better than that. Um, the, the, you know, the people who were claiming to be victims were not victims. Uh, again, there were, you know, people say, oh, hundreds of people are coming forward. No, there were two people making serious allegations. Uh, and they are liars. Harry, I've been meaning to ask you, do you reckon the theory about you can be a bit PDA, as in have some demand avoidant traits and it not be full PDA? How do I differentiate so I'm not gaslighting myself constantly? you know what i don't know who that person is but i really respect them you know i i I always respect a person who isn't quite sure you know people are so quick to latch onto pda this is me this is me this is me i won't hear anything but um i think we i'm I'm doing a pda question for the first time in a long time you know um how are you demand avoidant you know uh is it completely irrational um I think the moment a reason is clear why demand avoidance is there, then we can probably rule PDA out, you know, because there are so many different types of demand avoidance. Uh, Do you notice it's when you're tired? Do you notice it's when you're around people, when you're low on spoons, when you are having to exist in an unpleasant uh, multi-sensory environment? You know, think about why you're demand avoidant. Also, think about how you avoid demands. You know, really look at the PDA, the constellation of PDA behaviours and see if it fits. Um, can you, you know, I don't know, actually. I'm, I'm going to be really honest and say, can you just have a few demand avoidant behaviours without being fully PDA? Probably, probably. Um, I think people either have the PDA profile or they don't, though, you know. Um, I And then that begs the question, is each and every PDA criterion necessary? Uh, you know, obviously, I've I've not been up to date with all this stuff, but I can remember the fantasy and role play one was seen as uh, not necessarily indispensable. Um, you know, the, the P- PDAs might have that, or they might not have that. Um, I don't know which ones are universal, which ones are diagnostic and absolute, and which ones aren't. That, I think that's the problem. I don't think it matters. Rather than working out which diagnostic entity you fit into, just work out who you are. You know, work out which. Um, yeah, just 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 figure out who you are. That's a lot more important than uh, you know basing your identity on some diagnostic social construct. 
but I can sense a great book coming out of this, Harry. Yeah, I have every intention to write a book about all this. Absolutely. Do we have the latest update? For anyone who's not in the group, that's not going to be particularly relevant. Um, <laughs> um, with regard to all group, of that, they've been itching for updates all the time. We, I've not seen one sharing of the group. Um, I have seen a sharing of the group. I've I've not been in the comments much, but I have seen it come up once. Yeah. So can someone? Oh, I don't even have it to hand at the moment. Can someone who's maybe moderating just drop? A link to the group. Kerry's moderating. Kerry is still here. Yeah, Kerry's still here. I mean, what, had, we've had a lot of requests. They've been popping up to join the group today. I, I think we're at about 40 or something. Yeah. Can so, if someone's got the link to hand, can they just share it and maybe pin it? If someone, I'll, I'll probably have to pin it because it's my page. The moment I see it, I'll pin it. Um, yeah, join the group. You know, we will. We will, yeah, um, we are continuing. We'll do, another, we'll do another live soon, and where I go into more detail, because some people are probably here saying I'm not committed. I know some people have here said I'm still neutral. I'm not 100. percent Well, you know what? Join the group if you want. Yeah. Um, and that's the thing. I I, I can't convince anyone. Um, but maybe have a look at the evidence. And, and I don't know that you need to. I don't know that you need to convince anybody, or that you have ever tried to convince anybody. We are just creating a space whereby people who are invested in this can find out what was going on behind closed doors and come to their own decisions. And there's never any pressure. Like there's there's a lot of people that have felt um, um, that have have felt unsafe joining the group. We've had people have to come into who have felt they needed to create fake profiles to access the group, and um, and and. And that has been understood and I have spoken to those people and they have still been able to access the content because th the whole point is that um, it's there for yeah. those right, people who do have to go, what? Everyone wants to join the group, my phone's going. Rrr, rrr, oh really, yeah. Well, that's yeah. a good thing, isn't it? That's a good thing. Um, um, the, we... the dark liquid I'm imbibing is Diet Coke, nothing exciting. Oh, that's, that's it. <laughs> Um, I learned from Paula the yeah. other night. Don't put vodka in your drink <laughs> on a live. I'm great. You <laughs> love me. I'm amazing. I do. <laughs> um, um, so, uh, any more questions? Because I think my spoons will start to run out in the next ten minutes. Um, regarding legal action against the accuser i'm aware that we have to be careful how we have that conversation but and lots of people have asked okay and i don't want to have that conversation if i'm being That's honest fair enough. um again these people need to join the group and listen to a zoom uh where i uh, provide you with evidence which backs up I was going to say that backs up my claims. I'm not the one making claims. I'm the one defending myself against claims. You know, that's it. People say, oh, Harry is attacking the accusers. No, I'm defending myself uh, from the accusers' attacks and claims against me. You know, I wouldn't have to do this. Can people really understand this? This live wouldn't have to happen if my name wasn't dragged through the mud. The Zooms that we've been doing wouldn't have to happen if my name wasn't dragged through the mud. Uh, I, they didn't have to do this. They didn't have to go public uh, and, you know, spread these false allegations far and wide with the purpose of, um, you know, just tarnishing my reputation. If they didn't do that, I wouldn't have to do any of this, right? So actions have consequences. They, th How entitled do you have to be to uh, kind of take full control of the narrative spread lies about people, expect people to just believe in the lies without questioning them, and then um, throw a hissy fit when the person you're lying about comes back and says, it's all bullshit. You know, like, you don't own the narrative. You don't have a monopoly on the community or the truth. Uh, you have your opinions. I have mine. And then the truth speaks for itself. Uh Okay, so that's that. Any more questions? 
I'm curious as to why the need to renew the drama if there is drama. Innocent, seems That's defensive. <laughs> um, well, it's a very delayed defensive response, if it is defensive. Uh, as I said, I never uh, spoke publicly about this at the time uh, because I was too traumatised and I wanted to do everything in my power to clear my name. And also, I needed to find out what the hell I was being accused of. You know, people said, oh, why isn't he trying to clear his name? Well, it would be nice if I knew what I'd done first, you know. But people assumed, people were told, he knows what he's done. Really? I don't know. You know, um, so that's that. Uh, I'm here now, and yeah, and I'm allowed to. I have every right to. Here we are, and here's the truth. And I think everything has been pretty much covered. Um, I notice from those that have been managing the comments that everybody has been pretty yeah pretty and, uh, and i really appreciate that like we really appreciate that uh just one voice is here it's great to have you here just one voice you know it is. Um, it, i can I get an invite to the Zoom? Absolutely. Um, Anyone who can't access the group, I'm not going to on live be like, oh, everyone spam me with messages. Please don't. I might try. <laughs> You've had enough of that, haven't you? But um, if people, if there's a reason why people can't access the group and they do need to speak to me because I've been doing all of the Zoom stuff, you can find me. It's not that hard. Find me yeah. and message me and I won't be able to hold your hand forever. Well, and like, for a little bit, I can. Yeah. And I just wanted to return to what I was saying to, you know, people like Just One Voice. Yeah. Uh, wrote uh, an article about me in defense of the uh, alleged victims and compiling all of the posts written about me. Very accessible. All you need to do is Google and think Just One Voice's article gone straight up. I am, um, you know, I think some people, I think some people, um, experience commitment bias whereby they took a stance against me at the beginning and even though they were aware that i had mountains of counter evidence at my disposal they continued believing in the original allegations because imagine how painful that is not only understanding that you have been duped and misled and had your traumas and you know convictions violated and exploited but acknowledging that by joining in with the allegations, you could have perpetuated some harm. But And people, I think, are worried that I'm going to lecture them and shout at them. That's never, ever the case. I'm really grateful that people who once firmly align with the other side have the balls and the courage to consider that they could have been wrong. They come to the Zoom and we look after them. Afterwards, they're often quite shaken. The people who were... And that's the thing. You can see people who dig their heels in and double down and refuse to watch the Zoom and insist, no, the allegations are true, even though there's no evidence, even though, you know, it's just rumour and speculation. These people have a hard time considering they could be wrong. And once they take the plunge and watch the Zoom and see the evidence and admit they got it wrong, they do need a lot of space holding. But I have all the respect in the world for people and I don't hold anything against them. I've, I've, I've formed friendships with people who were who are former friends of the main accuser who are once so firmly on their side and i don't hold anything against them there's no grudge i don't blame them they were just acting in accordance to what they thought was right at the time they thought they were doing so because they were standing in solidarity with other women with other victims they were bringing about justice and i have all the respect in the world for these people so I just want people to know that if they are here silently in the comment section uh, with that same fear so many people have had, what if, you know, it feels like a, it feels like religion. It's like questioning a God, like, oh, God, I can't, uh, you know, allow my faith in this deity to falter because that would be sinful and people feel the same. But what if by listening to Harry's stories, I'm, uh, you know, doing a disservice and damaging other victims? It takes a lot of trust in yourself to just go for it. Nothing bad will happen, quite the opposite. Um, it's called burden of proof. He doesn't have to prove his innocence. Oh, v Victoria, how have you? Yeah, Victoria, exactly. It feels wrong. I am innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. And yet I'm the one who is proving my innocence 
with evidence whilst the accuser expects people to just believe in their twisted and fabricated version of events without question. It doesn't feel right to me either. There was an extreme level of manipulation, and I think, um, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, <laughs> things still jump out at me. There was very, um, I, I, I was looking for something earlier today, and um, the, um, the amplifying of people's fear and pain and um, being sold this narrative that everyone was in sort of peril. There were um, posts about how, oh God, that it's not safe out there for us and how like autistic people were at threat. Like she'd gone out and there were near Nazis apparently shouting about spectrum people, which I've never heard of. Like pe that being a thing that they shout about. But it was then like, um, people, us, we are in danger when we go out there. So it was like this amplified threat of people being at risk of harm, but that, sh that they would provide a kind yeah. of sanctuary and protection from her. And there was some serious, like, culty levels of manipulation uh, of people. Um, and yeah, amplica amplification of people's fears. Um, to the point of yeah that they would do something without without any evidence because there wasn't any yeah yeah my mum was told uh about the safeguarding from a former friend who stepped away there's lots of safeguarding it's like is there about what you know who's who's it's it's, it's so ridiculous and natasha gil gilbraith if that's how you pronounce it so there are victims i don't know how you've arrived at that conclusion no there weren't in this case there were well, it depends on what you mean, right? So there were people I was rude to. There were people who were on the receiving end of some, you know, brute force criticism. Uh, yes, there were. There were recipients of my uh, anger and, um, you know, irritation uh, and snappiness and rants. But there are no victims of rape and grooming at my hands because I'm not a rapist or a groomer. And anyway, moving on, next question. Is that it? I think that is... Really? Yeah, I think wow. pretty much. The comment, the, the questions slowed down when we mentioned them slowing down. Um, there's a lot of conversations um, happening in the comments that for all that have been really nice people holding space for each other and some yeah. interesting conversations too interesting conversations yeah. absolutely and they they are triggering you know there is controversial what we're saying i knew that people were going to accuse us of uh victim uh blaming um and the rsd stuff i think it's you know we we have to um we have to look into this stuff it's important it's too important not to um Okay, so should we begin to wrap this up? I Somehow, so. will you become a dentist now? Oh yeah, didn't I do a post about that? I think I did a post once. What would you do? What would you all? What would you all do if I became a dentist and just fucked my? <laughs> <laughs> I could have done that. Thanks for reminding me. Um, Lots of lovely comments. If you ever feel the need to go back and have a look at. Yeah, I've been, I, have been reading, I have been reading them. I said I wasn't going to because they'd be distracting, but they've actually been important to read. Um, but yeah, there we are, guys. Um, I was very bad moments. Okay, Tomlin Wildling, Wild Wilding. It, I always say I do that too. I always say Wildling. It's Wilding. God, yeah. Mandela, Mandela effect. Um, I am one of those people who was in receipt of one of Harry's genuinely very bad moments and I made a statement about it. He was mean and I was hurt. He admitted his wrongdoing and apologised unreservedly. He has dealt with it admirably. That means so much to me, Tomlin. Thank you very much. And yeah, it was it was a very bad moment. And I wish it didn't happen. I wish I didn't speak to you like that because, you know, we, Tomlin and I work together and Tomlin's... Is a, Tomlin's a person I've always respected. We had really, uh, you know, a good time working together. At least I did. And it, it's, it's such a shame. And I am sorry. 
I am sorry, and thank you for being here. You know, okay. Um, rise above it, Harry. Witch hunts, pitchforks. Everything moves in a constant state of flux. Don't wander too far. Good to see you back. Thank you very much. Okay, right. <sighs> Three and a half hours later. <laughs> um, thank you, Paula and Rachel, for supporting me through my return to Facebook. Um, couldn't, yeah. And thank you for all the help you've both given me uh, the past year. It's been a crazy year, painful, but it's it's had its moments though. It's definitely had its moments. We've had some <laughs> laughs, and I think we have all grown, as yeah. they were both saying earlier. Thank you, everyone, in the comment section today. Um, you probably got lots of questions. I hope that uh, I hope that we've covered everything. I wanted to just get everything on the table. Um, again, there are links to the group. In the comment section for those of you who are interested in attending a zoom those of you who are still skeptical those of you who think hang on a minute but this that this i guarantee i'll probably cover it during the zoom and there is evidence galore and i have nothing to hide because i know i'm innocent and i know i'm a flawed human being who has a lot to work on like everyone else will you end in a song no because you've asked um <laughs> I didn't have one planned anyway but maybe soon i'll feel brave enough to start singing to everyone again Okay, I'm going to wrap this up now. Thank you, everyone.